we're here with myself, Dom. We're with Connor, hey. co-host here from the RTT. You enjoyed our commentary, I'm sure, in his interviews. We got the one and only TJ Lanigan. Hey, everybody. How are we doing tonight? The Lord of Chaos. The Lord of Chaos himself. Uh-huh. So we're doing a new format here today. Uh, just doing some torment reporting. Figured there aren't a lot of torments, but there also aren't a lot of people doing these kind of reports on them either. Yeah. And since TJ is a friend and the other two guests were at the tournament I ran a few weeks ago and Anthony, who will join us later, won an RTT as well last weekend. Figured bring everyone together and have a little discussion, including Connor, who played TJ at last weekend's GT. So Round what was one. the name of the GT Round anyway? One. It was the YHP. Um, YHP. Y, the place is called YHP, but it's the Battle Your of... Your hobby place uh, yeah. brawl. Fall, fall brawl 40K GT. In Fredericksburg, Virginia, right? Yeah, run by Davis Fry. Yeah. Um, excellent top-notch tournament organizer. Okay. That's cool. So it was like five rounds, right? Yeah, five rounds over two days. Okay, so pretty standard G GT, which... I guess in this era, a standard GT is that it was some, held. Something be yeah, some, something be thankful for. Yes, yeah, it, yeah. it was standard uh, as though it was held. Yeah, so it was we actually got to play. Yes, yeah, so you did three rounds Saturday, two rounds Sunday, normal stuff. No, because yeah. I, I know some events are trying to do like this: bring half the people in for a few games, and bring the other half of people in for another few games, and then they do like Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, five five rounds spread out. It's uh quite it's quite it, it takes a long time whatever you can do to make it yeah make, make people feel safe is probably that's a, not a bad idea right probably. yeah it so, was very well run it's separate cool. rooms that was pretty cool uh it's smaller rooms for the top two tables which was awesome as well uh, what really do you mean separate it. rooms it had they rooms literally right? so they're like uh in a normal gaming shop they would be like your D, D rooms okay so there was just a glass door that was open and basically, it had one table in there, and we were able to. There was both the top tables went in there. Then there was a main room, and then another side room had more tables as well. That's cool. So, so Connor, why don't you? Uh, so you played TJ first round. That's a, yeah. ooh, that's a tough draw. There's a, it's like, um, man. yeah, I know, man. I was shaking my boots. Yeah, I haven't been to a tournament in such a long time. Um, yeah, that I think usually if you. Draw somebody who you have heard of or know is a good player. Like round one of a GT, your stomach kind of drops a little bit if you're a little nervous about the matchup or whatever. So but I was just, I was so happy to you be. You were happy. Here. You, you were like, I was, I was just like, finally. Great. You were <laughs> like, I'm going to new stomp this first round. And I'm going to crush this name and he's never going to do yeah. anything again. It's, yeah. I mean, people are, I'm going to be the TJ Lanigan slayer. Everybody in like the Eldar chats I'm involved in is going to be like, yeah, you got him. But that is not what happened. Just so. sent him back to Pennsylvania. Sent him back crying yeah. to mm -hmm. uh, the great state. But so I will, um, you want me to just talk about my yeah, list? So, quick and, yeah. Uh, what'd you play? So I, I, um, I ran Eldar Bikes. It's kind of like an 8th edition style list, but I, I took it as like a hobby project leading into the event. Um, I knew that the list had some weaknesses, but I had some uh, fun like conversion ideas um, for my army's theme, so I really wanted to take it upon myself mm -hmm. to run like a fully converted army, which I did. Because you were making yeah. those models at the RTT, your dwarfs, right? Yeah, I ran these. I have like Harlequin Dwarf Exodite conversions and uh, Craft World Lizard Men conversions. Um, it was great. I mean, I was, I was very happy with how they turned out. They weren't yeah. all, they were all like based and had like five colors on them. Mm -hmm. They weren't like done to the best standard. But like I said, um, I knew that going into it, the list had some problems. Yeah. Um, but what it was, was um, I had a Craft World Patrol. And it was um, Superior Shurikens, which is plus four range on Shuriken weapons, and Hunters of Ancient Relics, which is plus one attack on objectives. Um, I had your stock standard Farseer on a bike, Warlock on a bike, um, five Rangers. I had two seven-man units of Shining Spears. Um, and they, and I, I took the bigger units just because of, you know, I wanted some more. I, I wanted them to use Superior Shurikens to be able to shoot. Mm -hmm well and you make use of guide and be able to fire and fade behind ruins and things like that I didn't actually do that that much but that was like the plan going into it anyway 
Um, and then I had a Harlequin Battalion um, that was Frozen Star, so plus one attack on the charge. And I had a Shadow Seer who had the minus one wound that they come with, and I gave them right. a minus six inch range, mm-hmm. which is a, which is they're great abilities. Yeah, very very useful abilities. Um, then I had a the Troop Master who's colloquially known as the Murder Master. He had the mm-hmm. Twilight Fang Relic mm-hmm. attacks, yeah, five, blah blah blah, dangerous. Um, actually, funny fun story about him in the TJ game. <laughs> um, but uh, so I had that guy, and he had the um, Darkness Bite um, pivotal roll. So he was doing two mortal wounds to everybody after he um, made chose someone as a target of an attack. Uh, and then I had um, one big unit of Harlequin troops with the strength five AP two caress, and then two small five mans with kisses, which are strength four AP one D three damage. So is that like a, a big twelve man or like a ten man or a nine man? It was a nine man. Okay. Um, because like they're getting half blast at over yeah. seven, but you get full blast when you go into ten or eleven or something. Eleven, yeah. So I was like, I'm gonna just keep it at nine. That was how many I converted up anyway, so it worked out. I don't know why they even do that now. Like twelve man. It's just mm-hmm. like why would you do that? Has, I have so many why would, gripes. Why would you ever do that? Yeah. About the but anyway, so they um so I had the the big unit was like they were kind of there for like Necrons, which I didn't even play, but it's just like a big unit that's like take like sixty attacks, mm-hmm. rolling wounds and pluses to the you know, kind of stuff. Um and then I had the five mans and I had two four man Sky Reaver units and a two Star Reaver boats. Okay. Um and like I said, it's like a it's like a fast, fun list that um is very bad at holding objectives but very good at killing things um you know i could go on about what i didn't like about the list because i'm a warhammer player mm-hmm. but there's a lot of things i did like and it's, it's fast it hits really hard um, it, and most importantly to me it looked great on the tabletop um so i'll talk about uh the first game against tj since we have him yeah. here um like <laughs> i said you know i drew him first round and i was like okay bet uh he's got the he's got the scary monster mash for chaos i historically have had terrible games against those style lists. Yeah. But like TJ's cool. We like, you know, walk both walk up to the table. Uh, let's not be that nice to him. Yeah, I mean yeah. I'm right here, guys. No, yeah. I, I've, I've never met TJ, but we know each other from the internet, like most Warhammer <laughs> players do. That's a bad um, idea. Yeah, mm-hmm. right. Um yeah, I mean he just like we broke each other we broke our lists down and like bear in mind my list is like very elite. It has, yeah. it has like zero. I think I have two Star Weavers that are like pseudo screens. Mm-hmm. But the list has like no screens in it. So basically, I just hid in a corner. Uh-huh. Um, and TJ deployed on his side in a forest. Um, and I ended up going first. And I kind of pushed into the big because the terrain was, was was Nova L's. It was just like, have you ever been to Nova? Uh, so you, so TJ could probably talk because TJ was posting a bunch of uh, videos and pictures of, of the yeah, terrain. I did. It mm-hmm. seemed like it's, it seemed like the L's that everyone everyone was making during eighth. Like yeah, thumb, the, literally like the, the stuff. Elves. Yeah. Yep. The so they stuff. did them two different ways. They did them um, push the uh, the elves were either facing each other or facing apart, um, mm-hmm. depending on what where, where you were were in yeah. the tables. So basically, it made it either a space in the middle um, where you would fight and stuff, and the ruins would be facing each other, or they'd be facing out like your typical elves. And then we're talking two dense forests in your deployment zones directly in the middle of the map. And okay. then on the outsides were, um, were some, uh, were a ruin and then a mm-hmm. hill, literally just normal. And then you had pretty some scary. area terrain in the middle, left-hand and right-hand side. Okay, pretty uh, pretty standard setup. Yeah, how you you've feel- definitely seen that. It was just like Nova. So so on that note though, how, how are you guys feeling that kind of setup for terrain-wise for, for ninth? Is it too little or is it too like, or, or does it depend on the size of those pieces? I think that the two big pieces I like a little bit less um, just personally, but I think it's enough coverage. You can hide stuff, but okay. it, it didn't, I prefer like more medium sized ruins that you can hide behind, like around the table rather than just the two big ones in the middle. Yeah. I mean, that's definitely an artifact of eighth edition. Um, mm-hmm. When you worried about knights nowadays, I mean, knights, I don't know what you do with them. I mean, knights sit up up there. Yeah, <laughs> that, that's where knights go. So we had them hey, do well though at the, at the yeah, end. Yeah, I was gonna say they they did four and one beat the, the top players. Knights? Yeah, John, no, just, just speared wow, those imperial just knights. Normal imperial right. knights, man. Good. Pretty uh, pretty solid show in there. So so TJ, what was your list? Uh, so we're running. Uh, we'll just start at the top. You know, the icing, the cherry. 
Uh, we got Magnus in his uh, auxiliary detachment in all of his glory. Um, then we've got a patrol, Supreme Command Attachments, Cult of Mutation, uh, Demon Prince, uh, Zeech uh, with wings and talons. Uh, and then we take Armin. And then we take a Demon Battalion. This is the meat of the list. We've got... Uh, we've got a change caster, a changeling, and uh, Lord of Change with the exalted trait. Roll Fun randomly. Change. What? That's a lot of change going on right there. There, there's <laughs> some change in there. Uh, then uh, we take the impossible robe. We take the minus one damage warlord trait, and um, then we take five units of four nurglings, and then we oh. take uh, a big old thirty man block of pink horrors with the banner. And then some reserve points, 45 to be exact. What do you do with the 45 points? Split normally. Yeah, okay. You Seems can, like a, it, yeah. you know, it's good for uh, if you need to summon like a like a beast. Right. Uh, not a beast, sorry, a spawn. Uh, your spells can generate a spawn. So if you take engage or something like that, you can kill a character. You get a mm -hmm. unit in that, in that corner of the map that maybe you're not in. So it's a good for mm -hmm. like maybe a two-pointer. Or an extra point spread for you, so situation. Yeah, it's, a separate, it's a separate unit. That's some right. like very right. deep tag right there. Well, like it, it seems like a very. Uh, I mean, you, you're going back to your normal sort of cagey list here, because this. Yes. Is, yep. On its face, this is not a. I want to move up really quick and just beat you into submission. I mean, you, you know, would be like, surprised though, because people would take okay. this list and yeah, play I mean, it like that. I just don't. Well, we've seen we've seen that before. Oh. <laughs> We've seen, we've seen the disaster that is charging up the middle with a bunch of demon princes and crap, um, but that's cool. It's it's I, I'm I was worried that in ninth I wouldn't see Aramon very much. He's in there. I mean, yeah. he's the he's the towel boy. Yeah, he literally just holds <laughs> Magnus's water. I mean, right. he's just yes, sir. I'll cast Weaver for you. Yes, what? sir. I'll cast Glamour for you. One thing like, I'm surprised is this this list. You burn a lot of CPs at the very start because of the detachments. Yeah. Yeah, we start with five. Yeah, okay. That's what I was wondering there, because you're because he's not a Magnus isn't your warlord, nor is he in a uh, supreme command. Yeah, it's so, a lot of CP. So how did you? Because I know going into our game, TJ, I was like, okay, all right, I'm a little, I'm a little scared. So what, what, what was your thought going into the game versus like a elite Eldar list? And you said so, you had some um, some spells in particular that you found really useful against like a Harlequin speed style build. Oh yeah. So first things first, my local um, competitive player, I say competitive player singular. There's only one. He plays Harlequins on the regular. So we play probably once a week. Um, right. His Harlequin and, list. And who is this? Uh, Sam. Out. Uh, Hailstorm. So um, he uh, he's a great guy. Uh, he comes to some events with me sometimes. What now? Um, um, yeah, he's come to Pittsburgh oh. for a couple events, and uh, he's driven with me to Philly and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But um, so we play often. That's the first thing. So I know all the tricks. Um, you know, I know all the tricks against uh, Harlequins. I know how they play. So that's the first thing. Then the second thing was I am taking a list that deals really well with elite armies, which are basically what um, your Harlequins are. And then the third thing is when we looked at the list, there's no shooting that has any high strength D6 <laughs> damage. So going to the table, I was like, as long as I don't just put Magnus out there, we should just be able to really just control the battle. You know, Magnus should really only be charging what he wants to charge. So he should be doing the damage where he wants to do it. So I knew as long as I could keep yo-yoing Magnus back that we could pretty much do what we needed to do every game. So I felt pretty pretty good against the match, but you never know what's going to happen, right? I mean, like, sure. so I felt good, but I wanted to see how the first couple turns went because those are the most important turns in this particular list. All for Magnus, yeah. Yeah, for Magnus especially. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's cool. So, so, uh, so Connor deployed. He went first. Uh, so, what happened? Obviously, it didn't turn out the way you wanted it to with the first yeah. turn, probably. But I mean, I really just I just tried to run into the into the Nova L to like set up mm -hmm. for 
uh, being able to jump out with like my Harlequin troops and my bikes to start like digging into his pink horror blob and maybe trying to go after some of the big guys. I knew that like, like TJ said, I'm just like not in that list very equipped to kill big yeah. toughness, good invuln models because he can shut down doom very easily. I don't have jinx. Um, and when TJ and I were talking after the game, I deployed in like one quarter of the board. So he was able to kind of like box me in and then just like smite the pants off me. What mission Whereas was it? Maybe if I'd spread out, I would have had a better go of it. But um, what? Yeah, I, what I, I, kind of like off the rip, I was at a loss for what to do. Um, what mission was I mean, it? I, what deployment was like a Dawn of War? Dawn of War. Okay. Dawn of War <laughs> six objectives. Uh, I think that's <laughs> right. mission number eleven. Yeah, yeah. I think that, that. Yeah, that's uh. Yeah. Okay. I don't know. There's so many names now. Yeah, I mean, I don't know what any of the new, new missions are called. So you know, it was the one that had the objectives, kind of like, um. There was one on each table quarter, and then there was one yeah. at like in the middle of the long edge of the board on both sides. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you deployed in one corner and pretty much shut yourself off from four, four, out, of, four out of six objectives. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't have a great plan coming into it. Also, um, so there, there's definitely a lot of lessons to be learned from the game. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, it, it was over fairly quickly. Okay. Um, I don't have any sort of like. I'm not like. That's just like exactly what happened. You know what I mean? So, <laughs> it was like Dunzo Funzo. So, so how quickly was it over? <laughs> I think – so this is where it gets entertaining. So turn two, yeah. right, DJ? Um, he sets up for like a warp time on Magnus to be able to just like rip into my army. Yeah. And then he rolls an 11 on the warp time. Okay. I roll an 11 on my deny with my Farseer. I re-rolled the five into a six and I blocked the warp time. Wow. It was incredible. So this yeah. was like <laughs> wow. time to gut turn two, we were like time to gut his army. Like yeah. Magnus he, makes He was this... like he was coming around the, the walls uh -huh, of the Nova yeah. Hells, and I'm just sitting there like, okay, yeah. I'm lunch break. I'm yeah. Nice. So Magnus pretty much he gets that warp time <laughs> off. He charges on his side of the field, wipes the squad out, and then he's just kind of standing in front of them. Then we we're done. Instead, what ended up happening, obviously, he's denied it. So then we just we went another turn. But I would say um, turn one really messed up a lot of his plans. Hmm. Um, I mean, I would even go so far as to say because um, I think a, a good uh, a good way to get better at Warhammer is to be really self critical of your games and your play. Um, I think I really lost that game of deployment and not, not to just harp too much on this one game, but like I deployed in a way where I couldn't hold any objectives and TJ could kind of just do what he wanted with the board and just kind of pin me into one spot. And that's just exactly what happened. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's what happens when you deploy in a corner, unfortunately, is that well, if you don't have a way to Usually Elmar can do that. True. Like, very true. It's well, we, like the, we, we had the, we had this, yeah, we had the secret weapon against, penning things into a corner so um Doom it's all we got this wombo combo now that wow. i figured out for thousand suns and uh it's pretty deadly uh so basically uh we have our standard spell for slowing units down right so we take we take doom bolt and we'll take one of his units so connor was running two shining spears those are the bulk of his army right if you have a way to slow down shining spears that's that's it right there, right? You could just slow them down. You can literally be standing in front of him. He'll have to get quickening off. And then he only moves 16 inches, can advance. And then we have this new spell that one would say, I, I might have just came out, it just came out of nowhere. So this spell is you pick a piece of terrain, which ninth edition is filled with terrain. And uh, you target a unit within three inches of that terrain. And you also half their movement, minus one of their advance, minus one of their charge. So you just take all of his speed off the table yeah, just to begin the game. And then you yeah. just stand there because they just they can't do anything. And then yeah. if you hit the same unit, now they're half of a half. So mm. that happened most of the weekend mm. where I would just take a critical unit and just shut it down. <clears throat> and God forbid you if you were in a piece of terrain that you were affected right. by like a forest, which happened in my third game, or a ruin, 
that yeah, the, the L was on the other side you were trying to get out of. Um, now you had to move up around. Yeah. and then out. Like, so some good stuff there. And those are abilities that – a lot of those abilities that slow units down don't affect units that fly. So that's They literally good. say nothing about flying. Yeah, I know. No, that's good. A, a lot of the newer ones do. So yeah. So these these cool. two spells say nothing. They they don't say infantry only. They don't say non fly units. It just says pick a unit within twenty four inches. Doom bolt's a t a, a normal yeah. spell. So right, right, yeah. But this you new spell, that's cool. Which one is that? Is that uh, it's called warp reality. It's a cult of mutation, and everybody all weekend was uh, like, so it's on the demon prince. Yep, it's on the okay. Demon Prince. Okay. And everybody all weekend was like, why didn't you just take Cult of Magic? I'm like, just wait. Just yeah, worry about that too, because you were see. mostly using Cult of Magic all throughout 8th. Yep. Just okay. wait till I hit you with this spell, and then That's you'll cool. know what's up. That's cool. Well, now that now that you've used it, I'm assuming it's going to be nerfed. Okay. So well, I'm assuming Magnus will get nerfed as well, so we'll just yeah, wait on that. Yeah, yeah, more. <laughs> It'll be like 999 points. But I, you know, I mean that 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 combo alone, those two spells probably won me. I would say at least three of my games. Wow, it's a nasty, nasty combo. So he hit your spear, but you had two inches spear, so you're hitting both, and then killing one, then hitting one twice. Then first you did the because I had one that he, unit that he couldn't see, so he got right. he got a, he had a unit further back. Units, and yeah, so both back. units aren't going to be a threat at the same time. Right. So. so we basically hit one unit, and we were like. Yeah, if you want to send, you know, one unit of Shining Spears, six Shining Spears up to try to kill, you know, 30 horrors, My I'm God. game. You know what you need to bring next time, Connor? This guy right here. You oh, bring yeah. This guy. You need to bring that dude the would, old Revenant yeah. Titan. He would, he would, TJ's, I can tell TJ looks really scared. Of that he, thing got, he got so off recently. Bad. No longer is he like 1,500 points or 2,000 points. I think he is 1,500 points, the Revenant. Oh, I thought that yeah, was my, one of my one of my buddies has a list with him now for for mm -hmm. the walls, and he's 1500 points. Yeah, well, well, maybe it was 2000. Uh, so okay, so Connor, you got annihilated. Yes. Um Because <laughs> uh, you're not gonna if you're taking a jet bike list and you can't move the move the jet bikes. There's there's no sugarcoating <laughs> to be done in that yeah. in that sentence. It was it was like I feel your pain with Craftworld. It was bad. Yeah. But it's all good, man, because you know what? I have a new list. <laughs> True. I mean, and one of the – It's going to be different now, bro. It's fine. One of the important ways to get better at 40K is just to play the game. Oh, yeah. The second yeah. second best way is to, cheat. is to sign up for the Art of War War Room and pay TJ to coach you. Pay TJ. Yeah. Or even build your list or just yeah. talk to me about your list, the list you currently have. I mean, TJ gave me some stuff. really good advice after the game that made me think yeah. about the matchup in a much different way and yeah. other hard matchups. So it's true. Well, and that's, that's the thing. I, I, don't th I don't think a lot of people understand how much TJ plays the game. That even if, you, even if you're a really good player, if you don't play enough, you're going to forget stuff. Like you're not going to know the combo that he just used. You're not going. He's not going to know the combo if you don't play play enough. So you got to get a lot of reps in to really be on your A game all the time. I mean, any anyone could win, win an event, but TJ wins a lot of events. So TJ won this event. I, I'm he, I'm yeah. aware. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, we had a great time. You, you know, know it was super chill. You know. Um, mm -hmm. You know, uh, we did uh, some take backs and we moved some stuff around and we kind of talked about how I think you should have deployed separately or what secondaries. Even before the game began, I was like, these are the secondaries I'd probably pick against me. This is probably what I'd do. Um, you know, so, we kind of talked about deployment and stuff like that because he does have strats that do move stuff around. But like, again, my my goal when I play people, um, no matter who it is, is I want to get the best possible game. And sometimes that means giving up the ghost or explaining how these spells work. Like, he knew about these spells before the game began. Yeah. And even when he was moving his first turn, I was like, you know, you can just go over there and grab that objective. And he was like, well, I don't want you to, like, double, you know, you double jump Magnus over here and kill half my army. And I'm like, I 100% will, will assure you that will not happen. Like, <laughs> I, 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 I promise you that. I won't be doing that. It's not going to happen. So, so, so like, a question um, you know, about secondaries, because we were talking about that. Uh, for TJ, what secondaries do you think you're weak against, and what secondaries did you take? Weak as in, like, like I don't pick, or no, like, my what opponents are going to take that, that he should have picked? 
Like, what should have Connor picked against so I, you? I know. So my list, I pick. I have two that I always pick, which yeah. is while we stand, because um, it's just built in, and then oh. Scramblers is built in, and I don't remember what I took for the third one, and I got both of those. Um, we, I wanted him to take Scramblers, uh-huh. and he took Scramblers. Yeah, which I got. Which he got, uh, and Wolf. then I wanted him to take. Uh, we had talked about him taking Engage. Mm-hmm. All uh, right, standard recon for Eldar. Correct, but kind of explain like that's going to be really tough for him because of the sheer fact that like if a unit goes out by itself, I'm going to murder good. it. Right, yeah. because yeah. if you're only doing Engage with three quarters, you're getting a max of ten points. You're probably only getting eight. What? Right. I mean, so we talked about a board the witch, maybe getting some of that stuff. Mm-hmm. Um. And we talked about maybe assassinate, try to take out these char- these big characters. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. It's tough. But these are all tough. Just... So uh, we settled on while we stand, we fight for him. Yeah, uh, for the scramblers. Um, and I think your last one, you just didn't you didn't score heavily. I actually have my pad. Um, yeah. With all my secondaries. So give me give me one second. Let me pull this pad out. It keeps track. It's this man has a record of everything. He has. He probably has like a file folder or like a, a, like a cabinet for like all of his, all of his opponents. Uh, so not I'm, just I'm part of cabinet, <laughs> but like but like their personal weaknesses as human beings. <laughs> so when he plays them, he can just you know target you, you at a, like a, a like, like a emotional level. He can be like sensitive about this. Yeah. Yeah. Since we got our call is, let's let's attack so, that. So I actually wrote down every game just so I could have a cool. point of that's reference good. for later on. Yeah, that's cool. So I took this game while we stand, we fight uh, psychic ritual and assassination. Um, you took scramblers, engage, and while we stand, we fight. I did take engage. Yeah. Yep, you did take engage. Did take yep. Engage. I'm sorry, PJ. You took psychic ritual. We stand, we fight, and what else? As, uh, assassinate. Oh, assassinate for all his characters. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, uh, yeah, I mean, ritual is, you know, pretty easy when you got a big 30 block. You just, mm-hmm. you, one of the heralds can cast it. No problem. After all, the danger is, is gone. Yeah. Which was turn three and on. Mm-hmm. Um, while we stand and fight, he's really good. Right. Think about it like this. If your opponent spends... The first three turns killing Magnus, or even the first two turns killing Magnus. Now he has to try to kill uh, someone who's even worse to handle. The Lord of Change is almost impossible to kill. So the worst case scenario, you're going to score 10 points, which is the exact same amount of points you score for Scramblers, the exact same amount of points you score for a lot of these other secondaries that you're not going to max out. So I'll take a 10, and if we play well, we get a 15. Who's your third, Aramon? No, no, the Demon Prince. Demon Prince. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So he's almost never getting targeted unless right. I'm doing terrible. And then we don't even care about secondaries because right. you're probably already lost. Right. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that, that's – yeah, we, 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 we stand, we fight really good on those guys because they're putting so much firepower into trying to get those points. And they have to kill them. That's the other thing, right? It's a little psychological too. Your opponent's like, oh, Magnus is – while we stand, we fight. Well, I should probably kill him. Yes, you should. Spend your whole army shooting at him. That's more than more than welcome to do that. Please, please take care of this for me. And then the pink horrors just kind of hang out. Maybe your nurglings don't get shot at as much because your opponent's right. like, I gotta put all my anti-tank into Magnus to try to take this guy out. Okay. So the last thing before we go into the other games is why, mm-hmm. why uh, you said the Lord of Change is impossible to kill. Why? Uh, like, so first things first, uh, he's 16 wounds and that means that he can be obscured behind terrain. So that's the first thing. Yeah. So you can start him behind a ruin. He just can't get shot. Now you can see him. Like that's the funniest part. Like he is easily seen behind anything that's obviously five inches. He's probably a foot tall. Uh, big yeah. Man. Yeah. He's, big he's man. pretty tall. Yeah. 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 He's, like, he's at least, he's at least 10 and a half inches. Some, Cause I remember we measure a member of my ruins. Yeah, something like that. So yeah. he, he's big. That's the first thing. The second mm-hmm. thing to note uh, is that he has a three-up involved due to the impossible robe. Now, the impossible robe has its once-per-game re-roll. So if you're going mm-hmm. to die, 
you could just use that. And that's yet another free, basically, CP reroll on that save. Now, All if right. you fail it, he dies, but he was probably going to die anyway. Yeah. There's that. And three up invol is a three up invol. I mean, he's also toughness seven, so that's also good for him. Uh, and then we get through the other stuff. So we've got the changeling near him. The changeling gives him a six plus feel no pain. That's strong. Mm -hmm. And then his warlord trait is minus one damage. So that's oh, huge. Wow. Yeah. You've right. got bolters, melters, anything you're shooting at him is just yeah. going to minus one damage. Very, mm -hmm. very strong. Mm -hmm. And then we've got two random gifts that you can get oh, so, you, oh, you, do, oh you took the random ones okay oh, we go random because the yeah. tree is actually super strong so he can get minus one to hit mm -hmm. he can get the the feel no pain cp regen one he can get plus one damage he can get plus one uh knows an additional spell cast an additional spell mm -hmm. these are all very strong and the reason i think you go random with him is no one shoots at him anyway so you right. don't need to take the super defensive stuff like because he's just it's just a redundancy that your opponent's again going to be like, I didn't want to shoot at him before. Now I'm definitely not going to shoot at him. The other spells are just better. Like against Connor, we got Spell Thief. And then we just yeah. stole all of these Farseer yeah. powers that were just really funny. Stole Doom. I think, oh, he, stole, I think, he, think? Stole, he stole both of the powers from the Shadow. Doom. And then so like, what do I do? I don't know. he turns to me at like, this is like probably turn two. And he's uh -huh. like, what do I do with this guy? And I was like, honestly, you just run him in the middle of the map to go get engaged because he's a functionally a dead a dead model now. He can't yeah. he, he can't cast can't cast any powers. I stole Smite from a Farseer. That was pretty funny. Because at the end of the game, it was just like we were just talking like, okay, like how can I get points? And I, I mean, was like, well, do like X, Y, and Z to get some points. Yeah, and right. That's it. That's it. I, that, that just seems really shitty though. I'm mean, like, you're like. I already have smite, but I'm going to take yours anyway. Like, Your smite's fine. That, that, that's rough. So doesn't he also have a power that like heals him when he does mortal wounds or something? No. Oh, he yeah. has a spell. Sorry, one of his exalted traits is every time he rolls a six off feel no pain, he okay. gains a wound back as well. Okay. Yeah, guys, thank, thanks for subscribing to the channel. We're trying to actually do this. Yeah. I was talking to Connor. I mean, there, there's getting enough tournaments that I can probably I – mean, we might be able to do this every week. I mean, TJ probably wins an event every week, so he'd probably <laughs> uh, probably do that. But uh, I'm I'm assuming a lot of winners would be more than happy to pop on and talk. Um, yeah, only, definitely. Only if you're a winner, though. Well, no, <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just yeah, kidding. you can be a. And that's when Connor's mic cuts out. As long as you're not a peasant, it's okay. Okay. Why okay. You're not a peasant. You can, yeah. You can. So okay. So moving moving past the Eldar, unfortunately, Connor, I'm afraid. Uh, who? What was your opponent on? Uh, Game two, TJ. Why don't you talk about so that? Game two, I played uh, Mike Taylor. No stranger okay. to the competitive scene. Uh, he's been playing for a long time. Uh, he was playing his White Scar uh, Vanguard Vets list. Oh, huh, okay. Yeah, I've heard so about 20 that. 20 Vanguard Vets with Lightning Claws uh, and Storm Shields. Mm. Um, a popular choice these days. Yep. Six of the uh, attack bikes with Multi Meltas. Uh, a whole bunch of characters. Uh and some infiltrators that was pretty much the the oh and and of course cannot play space marines without a six-man blade guard unit because you know yeah i think so that's anyway, actually the codex it says yeah. you have to use it's this. mandatory it's yeah. a mandatory slot choice uh -huh. so he had a chaplain on bike uh chapter master with a whole bunch of crazy nonsense and apothecary as well uh yeah that was pretty much it that was the 2000 points I mean, we see that similar list. I mean, there's minor variations depending on the chapter. Yeah, but definitely. It's, it's basically you buy the Indominus set and twice and play with the play with that. So yeah, how pretty you, much. How do you feel about that matchup going into it? Because I mean, Space Marines are like very good, but you also have a lot of smite. So we played long ways. Mm -hmm. uh, we played corners, corner long ways. Mm -hmm. So I knew that I could get Magnus in a corner first turn, and I knew I could screen out the the L's, basically the sides of the L's, so that I couldn't get attack biked round one. And if you can't shoot Magnus with the multi melters on round yeah, one, it's bad. Once he gets buffed up, and they're all going to go. On the attack bikes, you're going to get targeted and murdered. So. Right. So then I won the roll to go first. I went first. Magnus jumped up to the corner and then slung spells across. Now, we use... The Wombo combo on a unit that he had in front to move block his entire army. 
So turn one, he couldn't move anybody out of that of that circle. So he basically had to maneuver models around it to try to get in and basically just shut yeah. down one of his Vanguard vet units, even though they have jump packs, even though oh, they right. have jump packs. Doesn't I mean, matter. when you're only moving three inches yeah. and you have a whole army behind you that doesn't fly, that's bad for you. Well, uh, even if they're moving six, they're strong like this, even if they're moving six, we know from playing 40 K forever is that six inch movement models aren't great assault units. Right. So because the, you know, so then he jumped the other unit up, then he activated the, the, he did the prayer, uh, the prayers to make them move a little farther. Um, so then he fired all of his multi meltus at Magnus and Magnus took surprise, surprise, no damage. No damage. Um, oh, that's, that's backbreaking. <laughs> uh, we also rolled um, plus one toughness on Magnus. So oh, he was toughness eight. So that was kind of <laughs> rough times. Uh, and we nuked a oh. unit of infiltrators in the middle on turn one, uh, which is actually pretty funny. Yeah. Uh, we were just that happen? Shouldn't he have been behind the L or something? So Magnus went far enough up that he could see him. Uh, uh, he was way up okay. there. Yeah, like he was, yeah, there. way up, up on the side. Uh, so you went on the side where the L was open. And yes, shot, shot. Into and, it. Okay. Well, he was like directly in the middle, and this is one that oh. Coliseum. So they were like this. They were, uh, they were both pointed towards the middle, so okay. you could just see directly into the center, which was a like a like an angle like this. Okay. So he was just sitting there, and he's like, "Oh, this isn't so bad. This isn't so bad." And then Magnus was like, "Here's a twelve. On here's an eleven on dice, which is like a thirteen. Here's eleven mortal wounds. Yeah. The whole squad's dead." And he was like. Oh, that wasn't so bad. And I was like, that was one spell. That was just one guy. One spell on one guy. So then he moved everybody up. He fired the multi meltas And then the Vanguard Vet Squad that he had up there needed to make a 10-inch charge to get to Magnus. Now, Vanguard Vets don't really do a lot to Magnus. No, as top, it is eight. Is. Top, top is eight's tough. Six to wound. You get full rerolls, but like... So what? Six up, feel no pain. Three up, invul minus one to hit. Yeah, it's not really going to work out well. Yeah, yeah. So he rolled the charge. He failed the charge. Now there's ten vanguard vets just standing in front of my entire army. So we pick those guys up, and then we picked up one full unit of attack bikes. So for so our had, viewers, what do storm shields do against mortal wounds? You know, <laughs> they don't do anything. No, actually. that's sad. They make them die quicker. Yeah. So it sounds like, I mean, your list to me, it's like your list is KG, but then you're forcing them to play KG because you're not making them, you're, you're not letting them move anywhere. Yeah. And their armies are not designed for that. <laughs> We're also burst damaging down whatever yeah. I want to burst damage down. So yeah. we kind of, he has to move up to try to, handle right. the list because you can't handle 20 mortal wounds a turn it's just you you got to do something you have to do you have to come up and get me yeah no it's so yeah. you kind of slow down the units that might be a problem so he has to kind of attack in waves and then by the time he gets to you it's like okay you either you know uh get and then you have to clear all the you have to clear all the pink horrors because they're blocking yeah. magnus from yeah, charges gonna, yeah That's so tough. The game went pretty south on, I would say, that was turn, that was his, that was my turn two. On turn three, we killed the captain that was standing in the middle. The yeah. other unit of Vanguard vets couldn't move. They were stuck in the middle of the map as well. And then we killed the blade guard. And then the Vanguard vets charged um, the bird. Yeah. And they did even less to the bird. Uh, and then that was pretty much it. Mag just, just kind of cleans up everything on his own. Um, right. So it was a pretty handed victory. I think, uh, for that one, we took while we stand, we fight, engage and ritual. Okay. So Again. not so pretty much, pretty much the same too, but he didn't have, he, he didn't have enough characters. So he might as well take engage. Yeah. He took a boar assassinate and direct assault, which was hold the middle of the map, which ended up right. being a mistake. Yeah, I don't see how you hold the middle against that many mortal, mortal wounds. Not after turn three. Maybe no. the, he got it the first – he got it twice. He got it the yeah. first Yeah, but that's like what, three points? Six points. Well, three, three points. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. okay. So he got six points for that. Yeah. He got six points for assassinate. Uh, he got ten points for a boar. So, so I'm going back to what we you know saw in eighth edition um, with you summoning brimstones. I, I, in my mind right now, 
Brimstones also seem a pretty good defensive tool for Magnus because nothing can really fight twice. Like Marines can't fight twice now, so they can't like get past the Brimstones and then get to Magnus also. Yeah, the pinks. No, I mean uh, you get with your forty-five points. You, you can't can summon, summon anything with forty-five points. Brimstones aren't. I thought they were only. Brimstones three are six points apiece. Oh. oh, I guess I'm going by eighth eighth edition uh -huh. points. Oh, oh yeah, they Emma. used to be three points each. Now Emma. they're six points each. Ouch, man. Mm -hmm. Like a six up invul and toughness. Or a to six you. up invul. So what that gets you is, um, like I said, you can basically so just. Uh, um, I got You know, I just kind of jump in behind the wall of pink horrors. You kind of just wrap him around, and then if 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 he's shooting one side to try to get to Magnus and the characters, you pull from the other side, and then use the split points to basically bolster that side. Yeah even harder well so so why don't why don't we uh for the viewers who may not know your your tricky tactics why don't you explain the uh the uh your split tricks with, uh, with the horrors does it still work the same as it did in eighth because i remember yeah you so they for overwatch stuff like that yeah so they have to start in um normal coherency from the rest of the squad so they can be two inches away from anything in the front um of the unit and basically, like I said, what I do is I like to pull from one side, whatever's not getting shot. So if your army's on the right-hand side, because that's where Magnus and the bird is, I'm going to pull from that side. Or I'll pull from a side to basically deny you charges mm -hmm. to make it more difficult. Or if I see a gap and I'm like, I'm playing mm -hmm. against Harlequins or maybe yeah. somewhere, and I just, I just fucked up. I completely forgot that you have an, enough space to get a solitaire or something in there. We just plop a blue horror right down on that spot, and it just seals the gap. We do that stuff. Um, if uh, we want to make charges and you try to overwatch them, which doesn't happen as much no, anymore. Not knife now. But it is a trick that I can do. It's mm -hmm. also another trick that is kind of like the same thing but a little different is now what I do is a objective that is contested. I will use the split points and start putting more models on that objective. So all of a sudden, your five Harlequins that went over to steal this objective because right. you started with three, now I end up with six. I actually control that objective. Right, because even though you have a mixed battalion of demons, they still have OPSEC. They just don't get the low. It's the same squad. It's right. not a new squad. So no, that I, squad is OPSEC right, automatically. No, what I meant is it's not a pure god battalion, but it is Correct. still... Okay. It just doesn't give me the extra oh, benefits yeah. for oh, Zinch, which yeah. is uh, roll two dice in the combat phase, mm -hmm. and you discard the highest, and oh, man, whatever one is the lowest is the you number. You're excited about using on. that one game. <laughs> yeah, double it's ones, <laughs> double ones. It happens all the time. Yeah, um, it's terrible, but um, so that was the second game. Okay, um, game three. So game three, we played against uh, Steven. Uh, and his or uh, and his ad uh, his custodes. I say admec because they really like hmm. custodes with vehicle spam. So I mean, this is the guy who won the last event with the Ares gun shit. Yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah, this is the same guy who won the last Fredericksburg event, and he ran. Oh, the Ares oh another one. Okay. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It's another guy, not the okay. not the guy that. Um, but it's pretty, had it's had Ares player. Ares conversations. So <laughs> he. He ran – he won this event last year. So he mm -hmm. was um, he was pretty pumped. He's a you know, solid admec player. He's ready to go. Um, so I was like, okay. So his list is three Caladii, two of the, the palace. It's a, a lot. Yeah, the, the little tanks. Yep, two of the two of the little tanks, then two of the dreadnoughts. So for everybody who's tracking, two telemons. Holy crap! That's seven vehicles. Yeah, yeah that's like already like seventeen hundred points or something crazy like that. Yep. So two Achilles, the spear ones, not the telemons. Uh, okay, well, much cheaper. Contemptors. Okay. Yeah, the contemptor ones, uh, and then uh, the Valderus. You mean the uh, character? You mean Trajan? Trajan. Yeah, Trajan. Yeah, Sorry. He's, oh, he's thinking of the 30 k guy. Now I'm thinking the 30k one. So Trajan and then a shield captain, not on a bike, okay. with a whole bunch of upgrades, like the plus the plus three wounds to make him eight wounds, um the six up feel no pain, okay, the, the extra consolidation abilities, all that fun jazz. Sure. Weird cool. on the foot guy. Interesting. Terminator at least. 
Was it a Terminator guy? Or I don't think a... so. Oh wow. Okay. All I right. don't. I don't believe so. Actually, that's fine. Um, so, so what was your strategy versus Custodes? They do have a six plus feel no pain in the psychic phase against you. Uh. <laughs> well. <laughs> watch out. Killer ability. Little... Honestly, it never came into play because he just used the five up when I was when I targeted a vehicle anyway. How? So, like, the 6-up didn't even matter because it was a 5-up. So uh, He was in Terminator armor. Alara's okay. Terminator armor. So this is, like, another, like, very elite army. Correct. Something that you can definitely sort of... Yeah, but the up, problem is his units could, all his units get rerolled for his vehicles. Now, he is running two units of Sisters of Silence. Oh, okay. And one Assassin, which starts as a Vindicare, and then he then swapped it out for... A Calexis. Okay, interesting. So that's like a problem. Sort, sort of. of. Sort of. We'll so get to why it was yeah. not even remotely close to a problem. Yeah, yeah. In you about two minutes. As well, so it's All not right. like you have to just chuck everything into the Calexis. Okay. So, Dom, you're, you know, you Do know you custodes. Like... Explain right. to me what secondaries with that list that you would take against my list. What secondaries you think would be a good choice? I mean... I'd probably take We Stand, We Fight to, and just hide my guys. Okay, um, not a bad play. All right. Custodes liked, like taking the center, but yeah. direct assault just seems, again, it's the whole problem with the, against mortal wounds and being surrounded. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I mean, Abhor the Witch versus a bunch of psychers makes sense. Sure. Great choice. Yeah, that's for a good choice. The, for the third one, um, I don't know, maybe because custodies players again like to deep strike small units and do uh, scramblers or or um, 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 line line breaker types types. Okay. So right. I don't know. So what did he take? All right. So he took scramblers. So that was a good that was a good pick. Uh, he took engage on all fronts. Mm -hmm. Not enough. No. Not enough, not enough units. And then he took a bore. So you got two out of the three. The third one I think messed them up. Uh, it ended up scoring him some okay points, but that doesn't mean it was the right choice. I honestly yeah. think that cost him the game. The reason why out. is yeah. Yeah. you got to push out. You only have seven, really seven, you know, you only have like 11 units. One of the units went in yeah. reserve. And these vehicles that move 16, that's great, except that uh, you're going to be pushing past all of your minuses. Right. All my minuses to cast and my Calexis minus two to cast and the sisters, they're not going to be relevant until the rest of your army slows down. Right. So he won the roll and uh, he went first. Mm -hmm. uh, Magnus didn't start on the table. Oh, so that was another question we, we had here. Um, did you often start Magnus in reserve or you put him on the table this, this tournament? Only if there's enough firepower to kill him if yeah, I don't right. go first. And, so, I mean, it happened obvious. twice. Yeah. Okay. All right. So continue. So Magnus didn't start on the table, um, and uh, turn one he boosted up uh, to try to shoot. At, the bird was behind a wall, okay. so there wasn't really a lot for him to shoot. Turn one he just shoots he just shoots some nurglings, uh, and that was pretty much his turn. Yeah, standard. Um, right. So on my turn we run the bird behind the L, and he's mm -hmm. like, "Well, I can I can see him if I get to you know like this point in the middle of the map," and I'm like, "I want you there." Yeah. Yeah. I, I want you to come this way. I'm trying to pull you this way. I don't right. want you to sit back and shoot at me. I want right. you to come this way. So we cast a spell on one of the dreadnoughts and we slow it down. And then we smite the palace that he took to grab a gauge on the left-hand side. That's my first turn. And then he moves everybody up. Mm -hmm. um, but he slowed down with the, the one vehicle. And he rolls low on the run, so he doesn't really run that far. Like, he really didn't do much movement on that turn. Um, he moves the two... Uh, we're playing long ways. So he took two Caladiuses down the right-hand side, one Caladius on the left-hand side, one Dreadnought on the left-hand side, one Dreadnought on the right-hand side. The Calexus is also on the right-hand side. Mm. And then the Shield Captain guy is on the left-hand side. And then Trajan's on the right-hand side. And then the banner guy was in the back holding the objective by himself. Hmm. Okay. So then he decides that he's going to move one of the paladuses in the back to hold that objective just in case, like, I bring Pinkaris. Because right now he has nobody back there. 
Yeah. He just has one shield guy to grab objectives. So he shoots everything into the bird. E everything. Mm -hmm. All the small arms fire go into the Nurglings, and he kills sure. most of my cultists except for one, which was just hilarious. Huh. Oh, I forgot there's cultists on my list. Yeah, like one cultists. unit of ten. Yeah. yeah, one unit of ten for the patrol. So he shoots all the cultists except for like, like two guys, and uh, fine. Um, and then he shoots everything in the bird, and he deals him three wounds. Ugh, and he's like, uh, okay, all right, we're done shooting at them. So that was kind of his second turn, and he cleaned up all the Nurglings that were basically out and about. They basically yeah. all died. Sure. So, um, oh, for this one, we took... Uh, we took one, two, yeah. We took ritual uh, minimize losses. Was this mission actually? Okay, so you were trying to be more caged than than, than usual. Yeah, uh, and while we stand, we fight again because right. that's like a double. So sure. Magnus comes in off the side, and we basically on the left hand side on my turn two. Uh, we cast all the buff powers, and, he, and then he just toasts that Dreadnought that's in front of me. And then we just look off into yeah. the distance, and we see some random shield captain with eight wounds and six buff female fame has managed to get himself into a forest. Oh, no. That's just so sad. So yeah. we hit him with Doombolt, and he never gets out of the forest. <laughs> Literally for the rest of the game, he's just stuck. Horrible. My you movement's five, my movement's two, my movement's zero. Oh, or like one. Like one. His movement's one inch. Yeah. He's in, literally in the middle of the forest, and he cannot advance. He moves one inch every turn for the rest of the game. So then he uh, he's like, okay. So that guy stays there. Then he fires his entire army into Magnus, and Magnus takes eight wounds. Now, earlier in the game, he had made a claim that Magnus, if he willed it, or the Emperor wills it, that Magnus would die if he wanted him to die. Well, after shooting his entire army into him, he was like, he should be dead. Mm -hmm. he, was, he was a little upset about it, which is understandable. You fired your entire army into a model, he should probably be dead. And I was like, okay, let's not get upset. Let's just go over the statistics here. We've seen this many times. Well, I have anyway. You've got 36 shots. You're minus one to hit. You hit on threes. Let's give you 30 hits. You reroll ones. Let's give you 30 hits. You hit 30 times. I'm strength seven. I'm tough to seven. You're strength seven. You're going to wound me on fours. You're going to only wound me 15 times. Right. Then I'm going to save on a three plus. I'm only going to fail four. That's only two damage each. That's only eight damage. Then I feel no pain. Maybe one of those. I take seven. Yeah. Then you fire all the small range, the small fire bolters, which he didn't fire everything at him. He fires those at him, which is 20. Let's just say he fires all of them. It's 24 shots he's going to hit. Uh, let's just say he hits 18 times. Sure. It's 18 times. He's only going to wound six times. Six. Yeah. I should fail two of those. Right. I feel no pain, maybe one of them. He takes eight damage or nine damage. And that's not even saying that I reroll one of the ones I failed on the two damage. Right. And then you so, feel all, man. So these right. like this day one sounds like you had some good matchups. You had matchups that were like a bunch of elite stuff you could blow up. You like all their fast elements you could slow down. In some of these games, what do you think players could have maybe done to approach that game where they could win? Not to like speak for that other player, but if you're just like getting into their head, how do you beat your list with like a white scars list? Or a the white scars, uh, it's it's tough, man. I mean, like, I, for the white scars list, um, I would have tried to stay behind the wall and just make pushes out. Now, I'm not saying you're going to win that game, but it would have been uh, probably closer, giving me less units to kill. Mm -hmm. The thing about this list is it does not take anything that I care about what your army is doing. Yeah. I'm not taking, for the most part, unless you have to, I'm not going to take Assassinate. And we'll get to, like, when we get to game five, we'll explain, like, I took a secondary that my opponent was like, I can deny you this secondary, and we'll see how long I can do that for. But most of the time, it's usually, while we stand, we fight, ritual, and, you know... Right. Something else, you know, that is kill oriented, which your army gives up anyway. Mm -hmm. So it's very difficult for you to 
not do what I want you to do right. with this list. I'm right. not taking yeah. like, uh, I'm not taking, you know, uh, like, like Slay the Warlord the or, well, you know. Well, well, the problem is too, if they're trying to, if they're trying to avoid you, they basically just gave you 30 secondary off the bat. Right. Cause you're That's getting, an, and, and the Nurglings are just yeah. going to stand there and do yeah. Nurgling things. Like you're going right. to have to push into those guys and get rid of them. Yeah. So in this particular matchup, I think he should have done what Dom said. He should have taken while we stand, we fight. He should have taken scramblers and then he should have taken, uh, uh, minimized losses mm. and just oh, sat way at the back yeah. of the field yeah, right. and just well, said, you know well, what? I'm just going to take my 10 points a turn or my five, uh, my, my 10 primary points. And however long you chew through these vehicles is however long it takes you to chew through these vehicles. And I'm going to just wait it out. And he might've not won, but he definitely made the game easier by coming at me with yeah. all of his army and yeah. kind of letting me pick where game. I go. Yeah, it was what? actually really close. It was 90-83. Wow. wow. Okay. So he, was, so he was a wow we stand, we fight away. That's crazy. He was doing well. Well, right? a boar really worked out for him uh, due to some unfortunate uh, plays. The sisters came down and scrambled. I couldn't get a unit over there to tie them down. So then they walked out of the ruin because I couldn't see them. So they walked out of the ruin. They activated their 2CP strat and just gunned down a herald. That uh, was each. Because they points. Could, or they can points. target characters, and they have their assault three weapons. Oh yeah, okay. and they get full rerolls to hit, and they wound on threes. Yeah, that's, that's so I was hell. like, that's okay, hell. that's a dead herald. And then I was like, it's okay, I've got a unit of nurglings. They'll just tie them up. And then the nurglings failed like a four inch charge. And Oof. then he went, is that a changeling? And I was like, nope, that's a dead changeling. So yeah. I mean, like. That was 10 points that I didn't – oh, and he got engaged every turn for them being in the back corner as well. So the, those guys got him the last five points for Scramblers, which that's fine. Like they were going to get Scramblers anyway. I attribute them to scoring him an additional 12 points. Yeah, that one right. unit should have died. So mm -hmm. okay, so, so so that was a close game. Let's uh, let's go into day two. Who was your Day two we for? play undefeated. Yeah. Undefeated Knights. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my so, man Jonas. The dude's a Jonas beast. is Jonas is a beast, man. He knows Animal. what's up. So, what did he take with knights? I mean, I'm assuming three knights or four knights, or I mean, he took th four knights. Four knights. So the list is three crusaders. Okay. They have a gallon. Uh, they have a Gatling gun, and they have a thermal cannon. And then he takes one gallon, and then he takes a detachment of Tempestus. And gives a commander and two units of uh, scions. Okay. All right. Just Basic. for scoring, yeah. Yeah. So for that game, we picked um, Titan Slayer, obviously. Sure. Uh, we picked Ritual, and while we stand, we fight. Okay. And then he picked Grind It Down. Yeah. Makes aboard sense. the Witch and Scramblers. Huh. Scramblers on a knight army. Interesting. But I guess you just, I guess you just deep strike a unit every turn. So. Yeah. So he starts one unit off the table. Oh, sorry. Starts one, two units off the table, right. one unit on the table. Right. Makes sense. Unit on the table starts behind the wall, and it basically just scrambles for him on turn one. And then turn two, he deploys the commander in the middle of the table, and he deploys scramblers. And then turn three, the last guy goes and deploys scramblers in my backfield. Yep. Okay. Pretty So standard. this was a very, very interesting game, and over in about – Five minutes. Shocking. Shocking. Over in five minutes. So Magnus starts off the table. He rolls randomly for my powers, uh, for my uh, for my exalted gifts, and we get an extra spell. So I play the whole tournament down a spell because I didn't realize that my Lord of Change knows three powers but can only cast two. I just – I don't know why you would know three. But I guess that's kind of how the Zinch works because the Herald knows two powers can only cast one. But the Bird knows three and can cast two which I didn't know. So I was just giving him two powers. Oh, okay. So we roll it. He gets a fourth power. Yeah. Which is his third power, and we just take treason. So I'm like, okay, cool. So oh, he wow. apparently had been talking about treason know, all, going. all yesterday. He was like, I love oh, that spell. God. Such a powerful spell. This is going to be awesome. Okay, cool. Yeah. Moves a crusader in, in the middle of the table to take an objective. Moves his gallon up to take an objective. Yeah. Gallon and the Crusader are six inches away from each other. All right. wow. hmm. Bird sits behind a wall turn one. He just shoots Nurglings. Nobody even dies in turn one because yeah. 
Yeah. The angles, the way the angles were set up, the Nurglings were in the buildings or in the ruins, so he could only get one night to shoot. And he basically was like, if the if the thermal cannon goes off, it can kill some stuff. If it doesn't go off, then it can't really kill anything. So everybody come two units go down to one model each. <laughs> Or th- uh, sorry, three units go down to one model each, and uh, that was pretty much it. Oh, that sucks um, for his uh, grind them down. Nerlings, man. Mm-hmm. Oh. So I was like, okay, sure. Um, it's pretty rough. So then it's my turn. The bird comes out from the wall. We check eighteen inches on on treason. Cool. We cast gaze of fate. Uh, pink horse uh, were behind the wall as well. They kind of run out to start screening. Two units of Nurglings from behind the wall now screen in front, basically blocking off the whole section. Just in case this doesn't work, I want to make sure this Gallant is not going to be able to do anything to me. So I set up for a big turn of Psychic Powers, going to destroy this thing with a whole bunch of mortal wounds. Or are we? Mm. So we cast Gaze of Fate. We roll Treason. Mm. Treason goes off with the bird because he's plus two to cast. We roll leadership, we roll a five and a one. We take the gaze of fate dice, we pick up the one, we roll a five. Jonas is moving models around. So Jonas is watching right now. Jonas is watching. Cool. Jonas. (laughs) So uh, Jonas is doing something at the time, stops immediately what he's doing, and takes his hands and starts counting in his hands and goes, okay. So you need uh, an eight to cast. You got an eight to cast. You needed, uh, you needed, you know, a ten for morale. You got a ten. All right. I, I mean, I guess he's yours. Okay. Cool. So then, uh, I don't really have any other psychic powers because he's mine. So he's friendly and he's the closest unit. So I think we did one target of power on the night, the furthest night, and that was pretty much it for the bird because no one else was in range. So I was like, okay, fine. Then we go to the charge phase. We need a six for the charge. We get a six for the charge. Cool. So we take the knight and we kind of charge. And then when we consolidate or pile in, we move around the side. Mm-hmm. So now we're on the back side. So he's basically increasing the movement. So kind of decrease where he's going to be next turn. He explains to me the two different weapons that this model has. Like and I, I mean, yeah, yeah, we go with the fist and uh, he, Tells me how many dice I get to roll. He's like, you hit on threes, you re-roll ones, you wound on twos. Fine. We roll attacks, we hit six times. <laughs> we roll the wound, we wound five times, then we pick up one of the ones and we re-roll with the CP, and we wound six times. Minus he four, gets, minus three to save. like 24 damage, right? It's 30, 30 damage. Oh like 30 damage. Yeah. So he then looks, looks and goes back to his hands and he's like all right so you had five attacks you needed to hit all five times you hit all five times so you win all five times you win it all five times i i mean i guess he's dead so that was turn one and then we consolidated that way because there was the unit of scions that was behind the wall they were the closest unit so we moved even further back so then on his turn he basically just moved where he was before couldn't charge anything and he told me at that point he was like Hey man, uh, we're pretty much done here. Uh, like, I just yeah, that was bad. But you know, we'll, we'll play another turn. So we play a turn. He kills uh, two units of Nurglings. Um, he uh, doesn't shoot them. Shoots another unit and kills it. Kills my cultist. Charges um, the unit that's in front and leaves it with one model. <laughs> Dude, so I'm like, okay, a, a, lot of, a lot of one model. <laughs> there was a lot of one models going around. Oh, um, and then he, uh, you know, uh, the gallant couldn't really charge anything. So he was kind of sitting in the wall again. So we mm-hmm. kind of um, brought Magnus in. Uh, he deployed a second scrambler. We brought Magnus in, bumped him up, and then we put everything into the gallant. The gallant survives with six wounds. Unfortunately, we failed treason again. That would have been really cool, but we just we couldn't get it off again. Oh, we got the leadership. We just couldn't get the uh, we couldn't get we couldn't get the leadership right. So then he goes on his turn, fires everything into Magnus. Magnus lives, and then we kind of just call it. You can't kill Magnus yeah, uh, because you killed a knight on turn one with his own knight, and then prevented the gallant from even getting to you. 
So he's never right. going to have enough to get through your screens. And right. Magnus well, the gallant dies next turn. The pink horrors right. hadn't even gotten shot right. yet. And then yeah. Magnus just double jumps and right. kills the yeah. other gallant, which leaves him with one gallant left on the table. He can't even right. hold objectives because this was one of the ones that was two objectives. Get you yeah. five points. Uh, oh, cut me. Yeah, because Magnus is what? Strength 16, three straight damage, right? Yes. Yeah. Neg so, four, you don't yeah. get a save. Yeah. So wounding on twos, no save. You're just dead, basically. Mm -hmm. And then death so, to the false emperor, like sure. it's not even a thing. Yeah, that's uh, it's an unfortunate thing with knights. You Knights is a very go go big or go home army. Yeah, so, so he was great about it. I mean, he was a real yeah. he was a real nice sport about it. I mean, wow. I appreciate you know people not being super upset uh, when that knights. stuff happens. You cannot be a salty knight player because shit like that is going to happen every tournament. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. yeah, it was good. He was he was nice about it. So um, that was that game, and then we went on to the finals. That was a hundred to uh, that was a hundred to eighteen. I think that was. Uh, that hurt. Wait, no, what? it was 141. That's what that was. Oh. 100. So, okay. So, so a little more detail. Who was the, so, who was the army? <laughs> or what was the army? That was night. That was knights. I meant uh, knights was 141. Okay. So, then we get to game five and we play an Art of War member, uh, Mate. Uh, he's also a former slash current member of ETC for Team Hungary. So he's very, very skilled. Uh, he actually ran through both Juice and Mark earlier in the weekend. So he had some pretty tough matches, and he handily beat both those players. Uh, so uh, he's rocking Harlequins. Stylish with, Harlequins, too. Yeah, stylish very Sin stylish. City Harlequins with a Yin Karn. Yeah, so, that's what I'm talking about. Sweet. Mm -hmm. So Yin Karn's a little spicy. Uh, and there was some little extra spice added to the list. He had a little more fusion than Connor. Um, I had no fusion. About, about 26 more fusion yeah. shots than Connor. So 26 fusion pistols, uh, 10 bikes, 5 transports, and a lot of troops. Just a lot, a lot of troops. No big units, but a lot of small units. All five mans. Um, yeah. Yeah. He had a murder master as well. He had no solitaire. Um, and uh, we played the pretty standard Dawn of War mission with uh, five objectives. Yeah. Um, two on each side, two in the middle, and two in his in his, your opponent's deployment. Okay. So this was uh, – oh, yeah. This was the worst secondary one. This was uh, Ray's. Oh, yeah, that one's bad. That was terrible. Yeah. This is the one where you can take your opponent's objectives and yeah. burn them and raise them to the ground. It was just not something you're ever going to do. Yeah, no, it's bad. So um, I picked uh, Engage on All Fronts. I knew he was not going to let me take Ritual. He's way too good of a player to let me stand in the middle of the table and cast Ritual. Right. So we did Bring It Down, and we did While We Stand, We Fight. Okay. Again. Uh, he took engage, assassinate, and thin their ranks. We had talked in depth thin the about ranks. secondaries. Yeah, you can get about seven or eight points okay. with that, and you're not really going to get it anywhere else. Yeah. He didn't want to take engage because that would kind of force him into plays that forced him to be in sections kind of by himself, which is just not good for Harley's. And uh, so TJ, before you I was, on, I got I got a quick up? quick point. So like you said that your army is designed around like. You take secondaries you know you can achieve while we stand, psychic like ritual, etc. So, what about um, Matei's list made you not want to take psychic like ritual? Like, why? Why do you? Why do you say that he wouldn't let you do that? Even though that's what your army is sort of designed to do. Uh, he just had enough where he could push everything in and probably get a cheeky play. And he would be smart enough, I think, to wait until later in the game, kind of thin out the pink horror, wait till turn three, till after I've already committed to casting ritual three times mm -hmm. or uh, two times with the same person, and then kill that person before I could get it the third time. That's the smart play, right? The smart play is not you kill that person on the first time he does it or the second time he does it. The smart play is you wait till the third time, um, you know, the what would be his third turn then you kill him and right. you wait Very cool. because usually nobody casts like a ritual on turn one they're usually starting turn two three and four mm -hmm. if you kill that guy on turn three that means that he can't no one else can do it now 
You just lost 15 points. It's done. So I knew that he would try some crazy play that would cost me 15 points. Now, he might lose the game or he might not. That's not a risk that you want to take, especially with 25 millimeter models that can just get in and do stuff. Crazy, crazy high level right. interpretation. Very interesting. Yeah. So what happened? So I won the roll to go first. Oh. He knew I was going to take uh, thin the ranks. Well, he, I'm oh, sorry. He knew I took bring it down. So he put all five transports behind the wall. So I couldn't see anything on turn one. He put the two units of bikes on the left hand side. Basically surrendering that side to me, uh, a little resistance. Um, I knew that if I won the roll, he would try to uh, – if he won the roll, he would try to go first and try to uh, fusion pistol Magnus. So I did this very fun play, which is the transports start on the line. They can move 22 inches. But if you put a Nurgling base at 20 – two and a half inches that means that the transports can now only move like 20 inches sure because it can't be within an inch which means that if magnus is further back on the line that means that he cannot get fusion pistol turn one no matter what he tries there's literally no way for him to do it so knowing all that i was able to put two units of of, of nurglings in front of the pink horror bomb to prevent him from even being able to touch him on turn one. There's no yeah. way for him to get to him. But so that, then you went first anyway. Yeah, but I mean, sure, these yeah. are the things you have to set up because if you wouldn't have done that, right. he wins the roll, he Phantasmal Gorials, and then spends the extra CP for the fourth unit. Four units then are in front of me. He already had the fifth boat in front of me. Five boats charge forward. He fires 25 Melta pistols at Magnus. Magnus dies. Fusion pistols at Magnus and Magnus dies. And then I'm in a really bad spot. And I lost five while we stand points. I've lost a lot of my offensive power. So anyway, we prevented that. He had the bikes on the left-hand side. We moved to the left-hand side because I wanted superiority with engage. So I went to the left and killed a unit of bikes down to one model. Mm -hmm. Then we pinned the other unit in place with the spell. And then that was my first turn. Then he went... Double move the unit um, by basically moving it the first time and then charging a unit of Nurglings. And then he actually jumped behind me, behind my building, so that I couldn't see him. I couldn't smite him. Mm. Nice. Okay. So he kind of just annoyed me with that unit, basically. Punched a couple of Nurglings, left one down to two, left one down to one. Yeah. And then he kind of just jumped to the other side. So then Magnus then jumped uh, – jump backwards to handle the rest of this unit while the rest of his army kind of flanked around the side mm -hmm. and tried to uh, not get seen because he knew that I could basically just jump Magnus 32 inches and just kill whatever was seen. So uh, we killed the bikes, and at that point he said, I think I want to bring the Yinkarn in to try to take out Magnus. Now, we mm -hmm. talked about it. It was not a good play. Mm -hmm. We knew it was not a good play. You run the numbers – Yinkarn on packs. her yeah. she's gonna do it. on her best day, she's not doing it. It's just not gonna happen. No. <laughs> she wounds on fives, yeah. she hits on threes. Uh, and we also got spell thief for this matchup actually as well. Nice. So Yinkarn oh, cast her power for rerolls once and we just took so care of it. <laughs> Yeah, because what Yinkarn's like five attacks with tough uh, strength six, six attacks. Yep. Yeah, so yeah. she attacks. she's okay. six attacks. She's minus one to hit, which means she'll hit on you know threes, no re rolls. So she should hit four times, and then yeah. she should wound one time, one and two. then re roll yeah. everything, and then maybe wound another time. So yeah. she basically wounds twice. Twice. Yeah. Um, so we basically uh, she four, four damage maybe. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you should fail one of those. Mm -hmm. Three or four damage is what you should take. Right. So we talked about it, and then he was like, you know what? I don't think I'm going to do it. And I was like, you know what, man? It, you might as well. Because she's here to take out Magnus. She can't do anything else. She's literally going to do no other job in this matchup. Uh, she's not a secondary for me. I didn't take Assassinate or anything like that. Yeah. Um, there's no reason for you not to put her in this corner. And it gives him an engage point. Uh, sorry, not an engage point. Uh, one of his other ones. 
Yeah, yeah, it gives him an engage point. So he could at least take engage and get another point for having her over here if Magnus doesn't just outright kill her. So he wraps his unit, his army in the front. Uh, he goes across the backfield this way and kind of clears out the Nurglings there. So he's kind of like in front of me, but behind the wall. Uh, and then he used the cool trick that um, you can use with Nova Elves, which is you put a transport on one side of the Elves, and then when the transport dies, they get yep. out on the other side and they can't get shot at. Yep. So he jumped, fire fusion pistols at the bird, it didn't do anything. Um, Sad. And then uh, that was pretty much the Yinkar went in, charged, attacked Magnus. Magnus failed one, one D6. He took two damage. That's cool. not good. And then so, he. Right, so, what turn was this? Was this turn two or three? This was his turn. Uh, this is his turn two. Two. Okay. All right. So, so this yeah. is his turn two. So things are already looking pretty grim because A bold move on turn two that didn't work out. Ugh. Well, I mean, Harley's like we, we talked about before with Connor's match. Harley's don't deal with mortals really well. So, yeah. Um, and he had already basically conceded the board to me. So on on my turn two, I scored fifteen points. I was holding four objectives. So was this a two or three objective one? This is, was a, a one, two, or two, three. A one, two, and three. One, two, okay. One, two, three, okay. Yeah, or one, so two, I was one, holding two, okay. the two in the middle and then the two on my side to his yeah. one. So, I mean, I was – actually, I was holding the other one too. I was so holding was five, five objectives. Five. It was five or six total. It was six. I was holding five of them on turn oh, wow. one. Wow. No. Gross. Yeah, it's tough. Because Nurglings just came out from yeah. behind the wall, moved over to the objective, and then he couldn't go and get them. So, so then the Incarn fails. She gets smacked. Uh, then she uh, dies. That was that was the end of her. Uh, and then the bird jumps out and punches a vehicle on, my, on his turn three uh, because we needed those, and he kind of hid them from me in the first couple of games. So he goes out to try to punch a vehicle, and he just rolls really shitty and does nothing. Oh, like, wow. he completely whiffed. And I was like, all right. So then he got out. This is the shit. This is pretty much ends the game right here. So we're on he turn gets, three now. We're on turn this three. is three. Okay. All right. Gets out his entire army. We're talking... 26 fusion pistols. <laughs> he gets out 20. Uh, there were 20 at that point because he had lost one unit earlier on his turn one. He tried to contest the, the my bottom right objective hmm. uh, by sending just five people out there to go do so. And he got an engage point as well. But he basically did it to try to deny me that objective. Bro. And then I did the nerf, I did the pink horror trick where I put more blues on that side and then held that objective. So he gets out 20 fusion pistols. His character, his shadow, uh, um, seer. Yeah, his shadow seer. He gets out his uh, death jester, and he fires everything into the bird. I mean, the kitchen sink, all the transports, the guys inside the vehicle that were charged. They fall. The vehicle falls back, so they can fire as well. Like he takes the whole barrage. Do you guys want to guess how many wounds the bird takes, uh, or how many wounds he has left? Probably he, not a lot. He has four left. Eight. Eight. Wow. So That's eight wounds good. left. Then he charges everybody into him, and he still has eight wounds left after the end of it. So, oh. Oh, so then he punts. These guys don't have any close combat weapons. Correct. They don't. They just have one damage weapon, so mm -hmm. it's not really going to do much. So then he he's standing in front of the bird, and Magnus is like, bro, let me come help you. So literally that turn – we pick up all of the troops and the Deaf Jester, leave him with literally five That's guys. That. The That's five that. guys in the transport. That was it. Where's the murder um, master in all of this? Did he not do anything against the, the big chicken? <laughs> the murder master came out on turn two, and he wanted to go after the Lord Change – and didn't do anything. Mm -hmm. And then Armin was like, I'm just going to roll an 11 for a smite. Wow, and he was like, okay. <laughs> and then he just uh, rolled a six for damage and he uh, just died. Uh, so it was pretty, it was pretty gnarly. So, uh, and then after that, we just called it. There was nothing yeah, we could do that's after that. Pretty, so he wasn't going to hold primaries. So he was already down on primaries basically. So he went for the bold move 
and it collapsed, and that was pre- pretty much it. Yeah, it was 100 to 56. He scored yeah, 10 cool. points on primary on turn two, five points on turn three, 10 points on turn four, and well, that was it. Well, yeah. I mean, it sounds like you had a re- re- really good event. Uh, yeah, it was good. I mean, your la- it seemed like for, for odd, your your day one seemed to be a little harder than your day two just due to matchups and getting off treason versus Jonas really really helped. That was crazy. Yeah. So And he, he you know, he was, like I said, he was a good sport about it, but he yeah. said in the beginning of the game, like, I knew I was going to lose this game. Yeah. Like, Mortal Wounds is not something we do well, and you have a lot of bodies. I don't. But I didn't think it was going to go like that. So, yeah. Well, um, that was cool. That's uh, so. Are we looking forward to? Do they do these every year? Yeah, they do. Them yep, like I gotta go back and once a quarter. Okay. Yep, yeah. I gotta go back and defend my title. I don't have a choice. That's okay. What so, TJ, is your le- do you have the best list in the game? No, definitely not. I mean, I mean, the what, best. What do you? Because we talk about the best after our game. What do you? What do you? What's a bad matchup for your list? Admec. Really? Just a gun line list that just stands okay. there and shoots. Now, yeah. I can win against that if yeah, I go right. first. But That's if he true. goes first and he has a really superb turn, yeah. I, I could be in a, I could be in a lot of problems. Yeah, we've played that before. I mean, Magnus, on an average day, could definitely die versus Admech. Yeah, mm-hmm. or yeah. he could just stand there and do nothing. Yep, yep. we've seen that. That's so. cool. Um, so do you have any more? So I, I know you're coming to my RTT after Thanksgiving. Do you have any, do you have any other events? Cool. They okay. just canceled. The Ohio GT. Yeah, no, I'm I'm in their Discord. Yeah, yep, yeah. So, yeah. Okay. So I'm gonna try to see if I can find something this weekend, but probably okay. not. Okay. Um. All right. And so then I we got you know fight before Christmas. That is gonna be massive. Where's that? Uh, that's in uh, Adventure Games. That dice that you have. Oh, the Adventure Dice. Ooh. Yep, the Adventure Ooh. Dice. So um, we've got right now we've got Juice. We got Juice, Sean Naden, Brad Chester. Um, just a ton of big names oh, coming in. Anthony's, Anthony's coming there too. Yep. There we, we go. It. Anthony's going to be there. It's going to be it's going to be crazy. When is that? Uh, December uh, 15th. Okay. So that's like it can't it can't, it can't be the 15th cuz 13th, sorry. Okay. So 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 the very next week. Okay. Yeah, yeah, the week after your event. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. That'll be exciting. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll definitely have to talk talk to you guys after that. It seems like, like I said, Connor, man, we can probably do, do this every week. It'd be pretty fun. I mean, it's um, it's going to be the same list because uh, we're not getting the Def Guard book. The Def Guard book won't be legal before that comes out. Right. So we'll just be running what we got. So, Anthony, exactly. how you know. It's excellent. Well, congrats, man. It was yeah, congrats. Congrats. I appreciate it. I had a great um, time. It was tons of fun playing everybody. If you guys have any questions about his list – uh, make sure if you're in if you're in Art of War Discord, ask them in the Art of War Chaos channel. TJ is always there a- answering questions or during yep. clinics every. I, I guess it's different days now. It used to be like, I mean, it used to be Thursday, but yeah. now with the uh, dual uh, hosts, it it could be different days. So it's uh, Wednesday this week. It's actually okay. tomorrow. Okay. If you're not signed up to Art of War, uh, I mean, getting getting just in the Discord is pretty inexpensive. So I highly, recommend, I highly recommend. I highly recommend that. And Art of War is moving to a brand new website, so we're eventually getting off Facebook. I know a lot of people don't like Facebook for a wide variety of reasons. So I mean, it, it's a great, it's a great community. We we chat there all all day long. Yeah. Some, some armies are more prolific in chatting than than others. But Definitely. You, cool. you, yeah. like, you want to talk. The Eldar chat and the Eldar's movie. pretty wow. popping, man. Wow. Eldar's popping. Chaos yeah. is usually pretty popping. Yeah. Um, I'm usually making jokes in all the channels. So. And then the the Space Marine one's always popping because yeah. Space Marines. Space yeah. Marines. We play Blood Angels stuff like that. Um, yeah. I mean, I I play Blood Angels ad mech and I used to play Eldar, but I I can't I, I can't right now. <laughs> they're they're in a they're in a sad place, man. So they okay. they're some interesting shadow specters are good, mm-hmm. but that's like one thing. But yeah, Eldar, well said. Waiting for a codex. Mm-hmm. So I know Connor has to drop. Uh, TJ, you're welcome to stay. Uh, but if you add drop, that's fine too. We're going to go to Anthony and uh, Joseph Clark, who Joseph plays Black Templars. And Anthony just won a, another RTT with Blood Angels in addition to doing yeah. winning my RTT two weeks ago. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, He's a beast. Well, gentlemen, it's good talking. 
Okay. Thanks. All right, Connor. Connor. So yeah, so I'll uh, I'll hang out. You can uh, you can uh, hide my my uh, my cam so these yeah. two guys can get the spotlight. Yeah, I'll so just gonna... stay in here and make some comments. I'm excited to hear about these games. Do you want to stay on mic or you? Yeah, wanna... yeah, that'd be great. All right, all right. So let me go to here. Joseph, Anthony, how we doing, guys? Um, so this was uh, it, it was going to be Mawa, but then it got changed last minute to oh god, name of the town. Um, mm -hmm. Randolph, right? I wasn't driving, so I didn't learn the town name. Uh, but Mythicos. Um, so uh, we had, and that was last weekend. All the weekends are blurring together. We've been going to so many events. Um, but yeah, uh, that was that was last weekend. Uh, played Black Templars there as well. Um, it's a little different. There's a couple tweaks. Um, the Invictors have grown up. They uh, they let me know what they wanted to do. Uh, as a career, and they both decided that they wanted to be Dreadnoughts when they got older. So um, they are now both Redemptor Dreadnoughts uh, with Plasma Cannons, um, or Plasma Annihilators, Destructors, whatever the hell they're called. Um, uh, and then I just trimmed the fat on a couple things that I just really didn't need. Uh, Power Fist on the Sergeant went away and stuff like that, but a similar list other than that. Yeah, and it was uh, it was a good time. Had a lot of fun. Um, this guy over here, uh, took my meteoric rise and then spiked me and dunked me through the hoop, unfortunately. Sorry about that. So uh, after round one, we both got a hundred and then nobody else did. I, or yeah, nobody else did. Nobody else, um, just us. Yep. And then we were like, uh oh. So, uh, round two we played and Anthony's list does what his list does. My list doesn't, uh, my list is definitely not tanky. So it can't outlast his, and it doesn't hit as hard as his. So it really just, it's one of those things where um, it's just a, it's, it's a bad matchup, and I don't have a lot of knowledge playing his list, ironically, uh, even though we play uh, semi-often, uh, just because we haven't run Templars into Blood Angels really at all. Uh, we've run my other armies into him, and him playing other armies into Templars, but that specific matchup we haven't run a lot, so... So, can you hear me? Am I good audio-wise? Okay, cool. Mm. Alright, so, um, I've been playing the same list for a hot second now. It changed a little bit when Blood Angels got indexed, but, um, the HQ slots are Dante, uh, because he is just a, just a bad man. Uh, a lieutenant. I think the combination of a captain and a lieutenant aura is, uh, not mandatory, but not, not mandatory, if you get what I'm saying. Um... A lot of armies would kill for the ability to reroll hits and wounds, and I think not taking them, if you have characters that can keep up with your list, is, is not, you know, it's mild trolling. It's not holy. Um, and then my third slot is the, you know, everyone knows him, they love him, the Chief Apothecary, but because he's a Blood Angel, he gets to have a jump pack and fly around. Um, he's a little more expensive for that privilege, but it's worth doing. Um, there's... Dante is the Warlord. He has a nonsense Warlord trait that lets him always strikes first. That doesn't really matter too often. Um, but he also uh, gives you a CP when he's the Warlord, so that lets me put a real Warlord trait on other people um, and start with essentially the same amount of CP, so he gets always strikes first, air quotes, for free. Um, into the troops is uh, just like two units of Intercessors with bolt rifles, mm -hmm. and now they have grenade launchers because they found out that Chief Apothecary is cheaper. <laughs> Uh, right that mm -hmm. you know you know it was too expensive before it wasn't worth it yeah um, <laughs> then it's a unit of incursors because making people stand still or not come to me i was actually really good against joe here i uh, <laughs> locked up one of his impulsors and kept the blade guard in a cage all game yeah because uh, he couldn't like he can't go you know impulses lost fly right and can't go through him so i was able to like move block and fence him in with some incursor play yeah, that, that was a big misplay that um, if I knew the matchup a little better, I would have caught. Um, but I just I was thinking, I'm like, oh, this is fine. Like, we'll keep him for a turn. Uh, I was doing some nonsense math in my head where I'm like, statistically, they'll wound the Impulsor less than the Blade Guard in it. So I'll wait and keep them in. And that uh, that didn't pan out. Yeah, they, they did stay in yeah. for five rounds. Yeah, they made it home. Yeah, it turns yeah out. They, they went home. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so, Blood Angels are surprisingly. I mean, they're they're the fastest of all Marines, pretty much. I mean, White Scars are fast, but Blood Angels are, are jump packs usually. Yeah, it's, it's they can get you, and they don't do two damage, but they wound you on twos, and all their weapons are minus three, minus four, and you just sort of die. 
Yeah, yeah that was basically oh, what happened. Man. So, so who you guys? Uh, so you guys got hundreds on game one. Uh, just briefly go over, like, like Anthony, who did? What army did you play in round one? So I played against. Admec, um, Admec. I don't know. Like Admec is typically one of my worst, one of my worst matchups yeah, when I. I play, but I haven't played I them. Play Admec, yeah. I haven't played them frequently in ninth, so I, I'm used to them in eighth when they had like their stuff was like way under costed post engine war, and they had just like so like just a nonsensical amount of firepower, and that seems to have been mitigated mildly um, by the points increases and things of that nature. Um, so I played into Admech. This place, uh, this tournament was using some, like, weird magic box rules with terrain. They had terrain that didn't have windows yeah. and stuff. I, I hate, I hate magic boxes, so, no question. Um, I'm not a huge fan, but they were obviously very advantageous to my army that doesn't like getting shot. Yeah. So I, uh, on turn one, he went first. He flew some planes over to me and killed, like, three Sanguinary Guard with some bombs. And then he shot a unit of chickens into a unit of Sanguinary Guard but didn't use the plus one to wound stratagem, even though he used Wrath of Mars, and it did, like, two mortals, and I think he killed one Sanguinary Guard because I was in cover, and he was shooting at me with AP1 guns. Yeah, it, it, yeah. Like, that doesn't have a huge amount of massive AP weapons, unfortunately. Yeah, so then in my turn, I used the 3CP strat to heroically intervene into one of his planes, and then my lieutenant regularly heroic intervened into another one of his planes, and then I killed both of his planes on my turn, um, and then I like flew over to him and killed the rest of his army. Like I know that sounds like mildly dismissive of the matchup, but that's like basically what happened. I jumped into the middle ruin, yeah. and then I flew at him and punched him, and then he died. Uh, I won a hundred to three because his army wasn't painted. Wow. Okay. That's uh, that's that's pretty bad. So okay. Yeah, it's so, a tough uh, look for the uh, the boys, the the Mars lads. Yeah. <laughs> He actually beat me at the last Mythicos event, and that is why Joe played you instead of me at top table that one time. Yep. Yeah. So, so Joseph, so who was your first round opponent? Uh, there was a lovely gentleman named Ramon. He played, um, uh, oh god, what are they called? Guard. Scions, there we go. Tempestus. Jeez, I was gonna call them stormtroopers. I'm like, nope, not anymore. That's not um, it. Uh, yeah. The uh, he was playing Tempestus. It was. Almost all Tempestus, except for um, some, like, Crusaders and, like, a Munistorm priest. And the Crusaders were in, like, uh, the whatever their, like, standard transport is. Um, but other than that, it was, like, Toroxes, uh, Plasmas, Lambdon Lions. So they're minus four, blasting yeah. everything off the board. Right. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, he had a plane. Uh, and basically what ended up happening was... Um, the boards had variants in the terrain, um, and when speaking with the TO, that was semi-intentional. Uh, they were like, yeah, it's, the terrain's different on some of right. the boards, that's so just what, a thing. Okay, so when you say variants, do you mean they were asymmetrical within a board, or was each board they, sort of different? They, were, um, they weren't asymmetrical within a board. It was certain boards had different layouts okay, so than others. So. Yeah, I, I sort of do that from my RGT. If you guys played on, like, like you played on one of the boards, Joseph, I think, for uh, – Custodes, where there was like a hill in the middle, as opposed yeah. to come out. Yeah, it's but it's sort of the same terrain, just a little bit different, different configurations. This yeah, was so, pretty different between oh, the boards. Oh, they were very okay. All like right. the the general layout was the same, but the giant thing in the middle that like basically defined the board was different between some of the boards. Okay, okay. Um, and that was very relevant in my and Joe's game. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah. uh, so, ruins as opposed to stuff you can't really move through. Yeah, Something stuff like that. that you can't okay. go through that you had yeah. to go over, which is bad when you can't fly and you have to run. Uh, yeah. Okay. So, so uh, how'd the game go then? Joseph? Um. So basically, uh, the reason I mentioned the kind of the variance in the boards is that the board that we had, um, this kind of magic box sort of scenario that they had running with their central mm -hmm. ruins, uh, had two central ruins, which essentially essentially meant that we, uh, and we were playing long ways, so I kind of had a staging area that could keep. 80% of the things I wanted to keep safe. Mm -hmm. um, so really, uh, he went first. Uh, I deployed my army, and I kind of... Um, I, I keep my... I have two units of Blade Guard, one that's in a transport, and Judas here to devout push, and then one that's out. And, and yeah. they stay next to the Apothecary, who also stays next to the Eradicators. He kind of tags everyone in that bubble, keep them all safe. Right. Um, okay. He flies his plane up, just like 
aggro, turn one, boom. Plane goes in. All right, I'm going to hammer your army before they can do anything, and I'm going to try and, you know, like, do a lot of damage turn one. Okay, cool. Um, guys jump out of the plane, uh, uses some strats, you know, bonus. Uh, I don't remember what he used, but he's, like, he's going all in, right? Yep. Okay. Um, and then he shoots the Impulsor. Hmm. And I'm like, hmm. And this is the Impulsor with Assault Intercessors in it. Because, like huh. I said, I, yeah, I, um, I have keep the Blade Garden one, and then the others stay out. Did he know where they were? Yeah, I, he knew. Okay. Like, we, okay. we had a long discussion about, um, I so, even recommended he should shoot the Dreadnought, because yeah. even though it's minus one damage, it has no invuln. So if he's shooting yeah, it, right. it just goes through. Okay. Um, so he shot the Impulsor with Plasma Guns. Or yeah, shot the Impulsor with Plasma Guns. I roll a couple fives. Impulsor mm -hmm. eventually goes down. Intercessors eventually go down. And that's basically his first turn. Sure. And I go, that's like, but that's like 300 points, 250 points. So whatever. Not even. Um, oh, yeah, yeah, it's, that's two, only two, it's like 210, something like that. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's, it's 125 mm -hmm. plus 95. Yeah, um, yep. And then uh, essentially the eradicators in my deployment zone with this plane in our deployment zone just kind of turn and blow that up. Yeah. Uh, one of the nice things about my Invictors getting a job as Dreadnoughts is uh, they're now both taken up side jobs as being captains for my army. Uh, oh, right. So my army's gotten a lot more consistent because if you remember, I ran chaplains and a lieutenant and no captain aura. Uh, so now uh, uh, one of the dreadnoughts is always a captain pretty much. Uh, so, because it's one CP for the whole battle round. Cause it, you know, that's, that's really good. So, so on the, on the subject of your war suits, um, cause so we have a few questions from, uh, um, uh, uh, Sean in the Art of War Discord, who really who who had a bunch of Black Templar questions for you, and uh, <laughs> overall, how effective have your war suits been? I mean, do you use them to like? I imagine you use them to distract opponents and sort of force them. But what's your overall like strategy for them? The the idea with the war suits was basically to push mid board um, and mm -hmm. clear out an area for my devout push kind of shenanigans. Yeah. Um, and the uh, the problem I was having is they would usually just bin it; they would just die. Mm -hmm. um, and I I kind of had a I kind of had a moment where I ran I ran dreadnoughts in a few practice games, and that's why I ended up swapping over. But overall, I don't think they're bad. I think I I, I what I was essentially using them for was kind of a, a queen's gambit, throw it in the middle, kill this or else. Right. Um, and if they killed it, it wasn't terrible because it was 160, so it wasn't a huge investment. Uh, and it took a lot of time to kill those things unless you had Melta and then just gone. But um, yeah, I, I still don't uh, I still don't dislike them, but I'm not running them right now just because I feel like um, the Dreadnoughts offer something to my army that they don't have right now. So, so I'm sorry, what kind of uh, what kind of Dreadnoughts were, were they again that, that you ran? Uh, so now they're Redemptors. Oh, so they're, Redemptors. they're the same yeah. models. I just... Uh, attacked yeah. the auto cannons and replaced them with plasma. Right. Okay. Yeah. Cause I was confused there. Cause you kept saying war suit and I was like, I don't think the war suits have the dreadnought keyword. They don't, they don't. Yeah. yeah that's but, so okay. so right. like I said, so they've, they've, yeah. they've grown up. They told me their career dreams, right. hopes and dreams okay. and they've become dreadnoughts now. Okay. That, that's um, cool. So, yeah. okay. So, so what was the, how, how did, how did that game end? The game against the Lambton lions. Yes. Um, it basically ended turn one. I <laughs> devout pushed into his Crusaders, yeah. and the Judiciar made Still them fight didn't. last. Just cut them down. The Crusaders swung into the um, Blade Guard, and I got to use mm -hmm. a Vicious Repost, which okay. is uh, if you roll a six to save, your enemy takes a mortal uh, in oh. melee, okay. which he hit me with a bunch of 15 kind of whatever attacks. Yeah, right. Um, and then I rolled four sixes, and uh. that just kills a Crusader every time. Yeah, so it's an extra. Yeah, right. Okay. Yeah. Um, extra wounds for no reason. Yeah. Yep. Yep. For one CP. Yeah. Um, so that. Uh, so once I tied that over there, that was dead. Uh, his plasma squads. I blew up their transports with uh, with the help of the plasma um, annihilator because I overcharge it all the time because all it does on ones is mortals and mm -hmm. I don't know if you know Black Templars don't really care about mortals. Um, no. Not. And um, yeah. so I would overcharge it every time do three damage minus five AP turn one. So crack his transports open, yep. charge his dudes inside. And that was pretty much it. So um, what's your usual selection of secondaries? Like, what do you really like for Templars? Um, it's funny. That's, that's been a thing I've, if I've had any trouble point with the list, sometimes it's nailing those down. But um, I mean, yeah. oaths, oaths is oaths. Um, mm -hmm. I always, I always, we always joke like whenever there's a, 
like an auto include kind of thing. We just say you start there and you work your way back. So I start with oaths. I work my way back. Getting center for me is easy and I want to be there. Um, so I start with oaths. Um, almost always there's a kill secondary that I'm trying to take. It depends on army. Um, Abhor the Witch is always a good mm -hmm. one if I can get it uh, or if I can go for it. Right. Um, but uh, in the Lambed and Lions game, I took Headhunter because he had seven characters that were all just you know, <laughs> tiny. Tough to, tough as three, four, four wounds, no save, basically. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so you know, basically by turn two or three, I'm just going like this and flicking them off the board with my Templars. Um, and um, and then it's usually a toss up between. Uh, I was taking deploy a lot in the past. I've recently been shying away from that. There have been a lot of times where it's put me in positioning. Uh, areas that I didn't want to be in um, and I didn't like it and then engage I've found is pretty consistent in my army um, yeah. to, to spread out but not necessarily in the enemy's deployment zone to get that you know that action ping yeah. um, but um, it it actually really does depend a lot of the times I'll take like mission secondaries and weird stuff like that uh, like on that mission it was the strategic scan mission and that's that's a mission where you can perform the action with an impulsor. So I'm like, all right, well that's uh, obvious. Because that was the one where you get extra points depending on how many you scan at the same time or something. Uh, or uh, totally, oh no, totally over the course of the game because yeah. you can only yeah. scan one each time and then you yeah. go, yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. So okay. Um, yeah, right. Yeah, okay. that was, that mission was also brutal for my opponent because it was a score two, score three mission. Yeah. So it was pretty easy to deny him. You know. Yeah, that's tough with small little units that are that, that die a lot. Yeah, and yeah. Flyer, so. Flyers too. Yeah. <laughs> So, so you won. So, what was the final score of that game? I was a uh, hundred fifty, I believe. Okay. Was, um, let me let me check the final number though. I should have that's it here. Good. That's pretty good though. So then you both got a hundreds. That's uh, that's pretty tough. <laughs> Do you? I mean, hundred is yeah. I mean, it's, yeah. So then you guys went into round two. This is the one that had direct assault as a secondary, right? Did you, did you um, like hold them hold the middle? Or was that? Uh, oh no, 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 no! I'm sorry. Sorry, I'm thinking of TJ's tournament. I forgot you guys are a different, <laughs> yeah, different, different, tournament. different, different event entirely. Yeah, the for us the second round was like a Dawn of War deployment. Okay, with, like so, raise, so I think it was. I uh, I believe so. Um, it was one neither of us even thought about taking. So yeah, I looked at raised. it, laughed, and then we started deploying. Uh -huh, yep. But, yeah. I, <laughs> so I, I think it was raise. Mm -hmm. So I I don't think as you you explained to me at my tournament. Not a lot of people know what Devout Push is, so can you explain Devout Push? Um, it's oh. funny. Uh, we've actually uh, we've had researchers in the lab, and it's actually gotten better um, due to Canicle of Hate, since that increases pylons. Um, and uh, so the scientists have been hard at work on that. So, But Devout Push is, um, at the start of the fight phase, select a Black Templar infantry or biker unit, and that unit immediately piles in, even if there are no enemies in engagement range. Yeah, so that's an important part that I don't think a lot of people maybe they glaze over that part. Mm -hmm. But it's not like other stratagems which like lets you imme immediately fight. Yeah. You don't have to be near anyone. You can just move. Yeah. Um I've you, uh so you can you can ping it on any infantry or biker. Mm -hmm. And what this means is you could advance and not charge. You can uh but specifically what it means is you can get out of your impulsor, <laughs> deploy out, move, advance. And then, so long as you're within four inches, because you move three and then you tag them on one, right? As long as yeah. you're within four inches of an enemy threat, you can get into combat and ignore Overwatch. Yeah, that, that, that's the main thing, too. You ignore all those shenanigans. You just, I mean, you're basically getting an extra almost like four inch to your movement because you move three. If you're engaged, you're good. Because um, that, that makes it, and you can charge, charge them from outside of an impulsor, which, yeah. is, also, which, is, which is just amazing. Yeah, the canicle of hate makes it ridiculous. Yeah, it's, right. It's a six-inch pylon, so he ends up moving right. literally the length of the board. Yeah, yeah. what impulsors move fourteen. Yep. You get out three. Well, you move. So yeah, well, you get out three. You move yeah. six. That's nine. Then you advance. That's 20, you 23. You advance right because it doesn't matter because you're not charging and, and you're yeah. re-rolling advances as templars. So sure. Um, yeah. So you're on average going to get a four. Um, right. Just because, you know, you're re-rolling it. So, um, yeah. so uh, the math, the old math was like 37 30. was like the threat range. Yeah, 37 because you're, yeah, right. That's yeah, and a, then, it's 40 wow. with Canical. Yeah, with Canical it becomes yeah, 40. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's pretty wild. Which is, yeah. So And, and it's not like assault intercessors that are tagging you. It can be, but right. most of the time it's blade guard and the judiciary is usually like right behind them. 
Um, and he can't get into the combat because he can't develop push twice, but he's right there. Sure, so, um, sure. It's... So yeah, yeah, that's that's that, that that's a huge. If people don't know it's going to happen, I mean, I saw you do that at the RTT here. Is that they just didn't expect it, and all of a sudden you're you're into their line turn one. It's just like like versus nids. Yeah, uh, that was pretty bad. So okay, so you, you guys playing around to your two hundred hundred point players. Um, so Joseph, <laughs> what went wrong? Let's go with a VH VH one behind the music type type thing. You rose to the top. What, where, where did it all fall apart? <laughs> um, I, uh, basically I, I made the classic mistake that people make against my army and Anthony's army all the time where I underestimated the movement potential and I was like, and I moved some stuff mid board and I was like, this should be safe and this should be okay. I did, I did castle up and that actually ended up making it yeah. less of a stomp because of the, the kind of bottom left castle that I picked uh, ended up letting a lot of units that probably would not have survived yeah. survive um, and ended up like killing Dante and scoring a couple things here and there. But um, really what the the two main mistakes was the Smash Chaplain, as I affectionately call him. Uh, Smash Chaplain moved up too far mid and just got tagged, gone by Sanguinary Guard. And yeah. that was too well, big of a loss to lose. Well, that's uh, the problem too. It's like a Blade Guard where people underestimate the fact that one Sanguinary Guard mm -hmm. can kill a character. Just oh, one yeah. of them. They got oh, yeah. five attacks, wounded on twos, two straight damage, minus three, minus four AP. You're just – it's really bad. Yeah, yeah. So, so. – and a lot of people don't realize that, you know, Blood Angels now, because they – there is no Feel No Pain banner currently, they're all 14-inch movement. Yeah. And because there's an icon of the Angel probably nearby, they're getting like average of nine-inch charges. So yeah. – I, yes. uh, I think I would just keep the movement banner now that the Apothecary gives me a feel no pain. I don't even yeah. know that I would go back. Yeah, I mean, it's good. So with your list, maybe not, but if you're taking like maybe, I don't know, just more more units maybe, I, I don't know. F I don't know. If you're doing weird yeah. like aggressor yeah. blood angel yeah. nonsense. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I shouldn't call people's list nonsense, <laughs> but it feels like it sometimes. Well, aggressors uh, are if, you, eh. if you're doing like run it people with blade guard blood angels, which is yeah. definitely legit, or like right. big inceptor blood angels, which is also pretty good, um, or that some combination thereof, then the five banner would be obviously nuts. Uh, I would have really loved that five up banner against TJ when he opened up a big gate to hell underneath my army and put it right. In it. Right, it's really, uh, it's really but, good against situational stuff. So yeah, T yeah, T yeah. Against uh, because you played TJ two tournaments ago in the tournament before, yeah. That is the in, most yeah. brutal loss my angels have taken, and I, I think at well, all. Well, uh, you're probably gonna play him at my my RTT. Yeah, I'm well, ready. Oh, I mean, ready, ready in big air quotes. I have Vincent, yeah, right? but I didn't have before now. Well, I mean, I, I, like I said, I play the game. I judge the game fairly based on how much people pay me. So, yeah, if you want to win. Open your credit card. So what you're saying is, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I have, uh, yeah, TJ beat me so bad that I changed my list. Um, yes, sir. Yeah. Need a ranged threat. Can't mm -hmm. just run at people. Oh, power are crazy good. They're so. good. they're very good. Yeah, right. they give yeah. me something to do that isn't run at him and get screened by pink horrors and get killed with mortal wounds. Right. So that's yeah. exciting. A new dynamic. A new phase. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, the plasma yeah, accepted did really well. Yeah, I mean they'll have a shooting threat. It keeps people honest a little bit. I mean TJ's army. I mean of course TJ plays a different army at, at every event now. So. Yeah, he's gonna show up and it's just gonna be like 120 blood letters with skull cannons, and I'm just gonna be uh, so surprised that I yeah. lose. That's what I thought you didn't you play that recently, TJ? I thought you played a bunch of blood letters. At yeah, your... I did. I played okay. 90. 90, and 90. Good. <laughs> you go to so many events, I I forget like what list goes where. That did really no. well. Until yeah. it ran into Sutan, and oh. Sutan just pills one Thurser off. And we still won the game, but it was like, yeah, wow, okay. He just kills a Thurser every turn, no matter what you do. <laughs> so, so um, what secondaries did you did you guys pick against each other? So you can go first. Um, so I took. I'm actually looking at the game right now on my app. Um, so uh, I took Oaths a moment. Oh, yeah, have it open. Uh, engage and deploy, and deploy actually ended up being a huge mistake. Um, uh, and I mean, I can just read off yours cause I got it right here, but, um, Anthony took line breaker oaths and assassinate. Okay. Um, and, uh, in hindsight, uh, 
oftentimes, this is a problem when you play with somebody a lot and you hear them talk up their own army. Oftentimes he will laugh when someone takes assassinate because he's like, oh, there's no way you're killing my characters, right? Um, but I actually ended up killing two uh, in in a game that was like already lost at that point. Yeah. Um, and so if the game was played better and whatever, um, I, I think um, in hindsight, I would have ran assassinate. But yeah, I, wrote, I ran oaths, got five on that, engaged for seven, and then uh, scramblers was nothing. Yeah, yeah, it's tough. Mm-hmm. And and uh, what was the final score in that game? Because I imagine the game ended up with you guys seeing who would kill kill each other first, and he just killed each killed you quicker. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> I had uh, him was... boxed out pretty hard, mm-hmm. which shut off his primary, which was brutal. Yeah. Um, and because yeah. I was able to like pin him in this corner, I literally charged his impulsor with inceptors and incursors, and put him in a cage for five turns. Like, I, those units didn't do anything else. They just stood around yeah. in a pulsar and, like, flicked its wheels well, for five turns. I mean, ninth, ninth Edition is in, incredibly based on holding those objectives. So if you get the other person in position where they can't get out, because if they get out, you just kill them. I mean, yeah. you pretty much are they already one already. Disembark. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, oh. So that, that it, end it, score was... It was 32 it? to 100. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Mm. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's and not it, good. No, 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 no. And it was... um. Honestly, what it, what it also was, was um, that board had a huge piece of central, like a massive piece of central LOS blocking terrain. Oh, and I should have just played around that, stayed back. Um, was it like a, like a giant rock or something? Or what was it? Basically. Yeah, it was like this uh-huh. massive hill. That, it was like a multi-tiered uh-huh. hill uh-huh. thing. Uh-huh. And it uh-huh. took up just like 70% of the midboard. <laughs> wow. That's uh, um, a... So, you could not yeah. score oaths of moment without being stood yeah, on. Yeah, I mean, so that's my thing. Like, I, I, I've been, I've been doing GTS for I don't know, like twelve years now, and you're always as a TO, you're trying to like, well, if I make these boards unique, people will be like, wow, this is such a cool event, to, event. Yeah, but the problem is, and, I, and I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying the TO did anything wrong here, but from my perspective, it's that the people looking at the board are the ones who are saying, wow, this is super cool. The people playing on the board are saying, man. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was massively <laughs> aided by that being that way, and I was it, still a bit like, uh, but I, I mean, like, I, I say this early and often, too, like Mythicos, where they put on this event, puts on, like, some of the best events I've been to. They're super passionate. Yeah. They're great guys. This was just a bit of a, like, yeah. hey guys, what are we doing here, man? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's it's cool there's a reason. Have. Yeah. There's a reason that that was an afterthought. I mentioned, like I said, yeah. the, the two biggest problems was the mainly just overall my army's positioning, but uh, yeah. not jumping out of the impulsor and yeah. letting the smash up on die. Turn. Okay. So let's see. We got a few more. Let me see what I've got in your questions here for Black Templars. Yep. Um, oh, so it, do, you, do you think there's any any like validity to using Crusader squads now, or is it just all Primaris? You know, it's funny. Um, I th- the the problem is right. There's two separate. wounds. I mean, there are two wounds. Yeah. So I've done this math in my head and and kind of like mulled it over a bunch of times. Okay. The the problem is right is like the things you're losing for not being Primaris is not you know the the one attack right because that's like right the that's thing a big that deal. Look at yeah. Um, what you're losing is access to just to like every stratagem in the book. Yeah, um, you can't get up uh, um, tra- transhuman anymore. Or no gene transhuman, rot. no gene rot might. Yeah, um, no, no gene rot, yeah. Uh, and then also not being able to get into an impulsor. And I think impulsors are sure. still super good, even after all the nerfs and whatever. Yeah, uh, they're okay. And I, I would take an impulsor over a rhino, over you know, Land Raider any day. Well, so my thing is, it's not necessarily that the impulsor is better than the rhino. It's that the units that go into those units are way better. So yeah. like, if Blade Guard could go into Rhinos, I would definitely consider a Rhino mm-hmm. because it's 50 points cheaper and you could take like Rhino behind a wall and then take an Impulsor for the unit that's going to do the tricks maybe. I don't know. But anyway, yeah. it's the fact that no really no really heavy hitters go into Rhinos. So. Yeah, and and so so you so you start there, right? And it's like, all right, so for 5 points, right? Cuz mm-hmm. you know, 5 men, whatever, or 1 point each, however you want to look at it. But I I look at it in how I typically run my list, which is five mans, because um, I, I hate extended coherency. Uh, so for uh, five yeah, points, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I am giving up all these stratagems and an attack 
and support through you know various different uh, vehicle choices and stuff like that. Um, I don't think it's worth it. I I could be wrong. There could be a list that you know runs sixteen Crusaders and a Land Raider Crusader. I kind of doubt it. I think those days are right. in fourth edition, and that's where they're going to stay. Yeah, um, yeah, definitely. I mean, I love I love like the giant horde spam of like infantry upon infantry. You know, like the the tide of Templars. Uh, I don't think that we're going to see that. No. Uh, I think there I is an argument out of it. if you have five points, right? If you have five points you got to float in your list and you have a unit that's just going to sit backfield and do an objective, sure, do that. Yeah. So what are your thoughts on uh, Grimaldus versus a uh, normal chaplain? Grimaldus. Like, versus <laughs> versus well, chaplain in general. I don't really know what they changed his rules to, uh, but I remember he's what a he's a master of sanctity, right? Uh, technically oh boy this is a whole thing so technically right now he doesn't have the master of sanctity keyword um that seems to be a misprint uh, because the black templar faq was rife with misprints um right now his name is misspelled in the point section it says grimalis it's real bad um so technically right now he's not a master of sanctity so technically rules is written you could run a master of sanctity and him that would be super good uh, I'm not doing that because I'm sure any day now yeah. there's going to be an article where they're like, whoops, right, uh, they already he, fixed the yeah. FAQ and like re-added the Super Doctrine because I was missing, oh. but th- they didn't fix that. That's weird because he's I, like the, the, the Astarath of Black Templars, you know, he's like the leader of the chapel. Yeah, yeah, he's, you know, it's other than Helbrecht, right? That's like, that's yeah. him. Um, yeah. So right now, if you're going to run it, rules is written. There's some jank where you can take two Masters of Sanctity. Uh, I'm not doing it because I'm not going to rely on that because I think... That's a lot of chaplains, too. It's a lot of chaplains, but uh, ironically... You already have two. Me, me and Anthony yeah. have had this discussion. You, um, the Templars have access to a litany where you make your chaplain uh, a lieutenant. Oh, that's right. You have that's right. You have special litanies, don't you, Still. Yes. Yeah, okay. yeah. We have a okay. whole list of yeah, right. Okay. You can, okay. You can get a five-up uh, field no pain, which is what the guy who was running the, the, the 10-man Terminator blob. So okay. That's what he was doing. He was chucking that on them so now you have you know basically blight lords with storm shields um yeah. and the and so you have like some stuff with that um but in general m- the way my army plays is where we have to get to the opponent quickly and we have to tie up the things that are going to kill us while the rest of the army gets there yeah um, and grimaldus is just not fast enough typically my other problem with him is he's four wounds so oh, only if- four uh He's four Ooh. wounds, so if he's even just that's slightly so caught out, he'll just get ripped apart. You know, maybe that's so – maybe it's not, not a typo that he's not a master of sanctity because four <laughs> wounds generally means you're a basic character, whereas Astarath has five wounds. I would – okay, yeah. so I, I would agree except that in 8th edition he was – Yeah, he was. I know, so. I know. I, I, it's weird. There's only four wounds though. So, okay. Um, so you're a melee-focused army. You're trying to get him as quick as possible – do you change anything versus a gun line? Like, let's say you're playing against Shooty Admech. Do you change anything? Is it still the same same strategy, basically? Um, it's the same strategy. Actually, in round three, I was playing a very Shooty Eldar list. Okay, well, um, while we go go into that then. So, yeah, so you're playing a Shooty Eldar list. Uh, what what do you remember was in the list? Uh, it was uh, it was three fire prisms doing the stratagem to shoot yeah. you know through the one and then yeah, yeah. re rolls on everything. Yep. Uh, and then some gun batteries. Uh, some shining spears and um, uh, the yin karn. Okay. Um, All right. So, and it was basically just I'm gonna blast you off the board. I, we played. Unfortunately for me, we played long ways. Um, so it would. He just sat in he the back. Of yeah, he could deploy team. further back. Yeah. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, so he just sat way in the back, just shooting me. Um, and the strategy there, uh, typically, what happens is. Uh, I send out my guys in waves and cap the objectives because normally a list like that just seeds primary. Sure. Just to, like, yeah. shoot me. Uh, and I just cap objectives just enough to not die and score my 15 over mm-hmm. you where you're like you're scoring your five or zero in some matches. Sure. Um, in that match, I was able to nine primary pretty hard. Oh, um, OK. And then uh, the blade guard kind of do their thing where they move all the way up and devout push and they tag a unit. And then they stay up there and they throw a haymaker into his line, make problems, and then they get tough. Yeah. Uh, So, but what ends up happening, what ends up, what ended up happening that game and what ends up happening most is 
against like these dedicated gun lines with a bad deployment where um, I don't have enough damage consistently to just like punch through everything. Yeah. Um, I just win on points. I just I throw bodies on objectives and I die. And um, it was kind of like the Tyranid match at your tournament where the mm -hmm. opponent's like, "Man, you have no models left," and I'm and I go, "Yep, that's." Just well, that's the game we're playing. In ninth edition, if people who are watching this don't know, in ninth edition, you don't win by tabling your opponent. Yeah, yep. So yeah. Um, in, in, in eighth and every other that. edition, you did. Mm -hmm. But ninth, you don't. So, so yeah, against heavy gun lines, I just kind of touch you, tag you, box you, and even if you kill everything because my list isn't super tanky, it doesn't matter because I outscore you usually by the point where it matters. Yeah, so um, what secondaries did you take for Eldar? Uh, versus Eldar, I took um, Abhor the Witch. Makes sense. And I took... Uh, let me pull that up real quick. I took Abhor the Witch... Let me see here. Abhor the Witch is very popular. I mean, it's, yeah. I mean, it's easy points. Especially if you take Assassinate, too. You're getting like 10, 10, 8 points per character. Yeah, unfortunately, he only had 3 characters. That's oh, why okay. I went for Abhor the Witch rather mm -hmm. than Assassinate. Um, yeah, Oath's a moment, bring it down because you had a ton of vehicles and sure. Abhor the Witch. Okay. Um, this was not a huge secondary scoring game for me. It was 15 yeah. on Oaths, it was 12 on Bring It Down, and there's only 5 on Abhor the Witch. Because, yeah, but um, the nice part about Oaths is you don't, you don't have to be aggressive. He, if he can't come at you, mm -hmm. you're getting, what, like 2 points for holding the middle, yep. 1 point for not failing a, a, a morale test, mm -hmm. and then what's killing, the other one? Killing a vehicle, monster, a vehicle, or character. For, for 1 point, yeah, 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 yep. right. Yeah, so I, I mean that's that's pretty. All, all you do is get three points a turn. It's not that not that hard. Yeah, yeah. So, so yeah, um, yeah. So so basically, um, what ended up happening is I only got five on a poor, but the other I got fifteen and twelve. Um, the reason I got five on a poor was uh, Yin Karn was teleporting around, couldn't, sure. couldn't place it down in one, couldn't kill it in one phase. Almost killed it in Overwatch with a Dreadnought, though. Um, the Overwatch on those oh, it's Overwatch the plasma. Okay, it's real sneaky. Um, yeah, if you get the, lucky with that, yeah. Yeah, and um, but yeah, I wasn't able to pin that down, and then he had a um, like a farseer on a jet bike, and I just I couldn't. Sure. Yeah, that yeah, that's there. tough. So, what was the final score in that game for you? Uh, so that was eighty-seven sixty. Okay, that's good. Yeah. So, you, so you went two and two and one that event with mm -hmm. your only loss versus Anthony. That's pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, it sounds like. Yeah, okay. How many people were at this event? 24? I think some dropped, but... Yeah, I think we that was started the... with more. People started to drop. And uh, there was so someone... Was, so two away from a GT? <laughs> yeah, it was It was right there. It was very yeah. close. I and, mean, not um, like IDC points are really that important right now, but... You they're know. literally not even being updated, so whatever. <laughs> it hasn't ah. been updated in like two months. Well, um... I, I did. I did put the points in. They don't matter, but whatever. Yeah, they, yeah, they, they don't update them. They don't update them. That's not well. There's point. no real. I don't know. There's no real season. It's a bit of a meme. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Okay. We so did. Uh, we did cool. one event. Actually, Joe wasn't even at this one. We did one yeah. event. I have, I have one event logged as Blood Angels, and I'm like rank 45 or something like that. It's like, yeah, man, woo, one event. Win it. ITC seasons just Win a it. disaster. Yeah, wow. it's it, it's a shame that that's actually the my my main goal setting out to go to tournaments was just to be uh, rank so, one Templar eventually, but right, I have a so, way of tracking that right now. So this is a little bit of a sidebar, um, yeah. but for people who were in the competitive scene last year, is that ITC points do seem a little bit silly in terms of like you're not making any money off 40k. I mean, even even if you're Richard Siegler or Nick Nanavati. Or, or TJ, you know, Lanigan, even if you get first place in ITC, you get $3,000. Okay. But how much money did you spend to go to these dozen oh, it's events? Not close. <laughs> and how much money did the models cost? How, you know, you're not you're making zero. You're making, yeah. you're making negative. Yeah, you're in so, it for the, the love of the game. That's exactly. Right. So it's cool. But at the same time, it's like the points don't do anything except they motivate you in a competitive aspect yeah. so like like i you know all like during the season like i run i, I run two gts and i run like five or six rtt a year but i still want to get my I, I try to get five games in five tournaments in with blood angels and five tournaments in with another army like admec just because it's cool to see how you do mm -hmm. you know yeah. it's, just, it's just it's just fun in that in, in that regard so you went two and one what was your um overall placing uh eighth i eighth. believe eighth oh wow yeah. okay yeah. Um, oh, because of the loss to Anthony. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It ended up, you know, it was like two months and whatever. So, yeah. um, and yeah. it was like you could see the couple places above me. It was a difference of like three points between okay. places. Yeah. 
Yeah, so no, one last question for Black Templars. Do you um? Do, what about Outriders? Have, have you any? Have you thought about them as like a like, like a shooting base unit? Like in my opinion, the problem with Outriders is they're max of three models. Mm-hmm. Out, Outriders have almost yeah. been in his list like nine times, and they keep <laughs> becoming something else. Like at like the yeah. the twenty third hour. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Outriders are um they're on top of like at the top of my queue of like next units to they're like a paint. they're like a good mid tier unit, but I I always feel like. Every other unit in Indominus got boosted to six models, and yeah. at three models, like in the eighth and ninth edition, is a stacking buff game mm-hmm. where oh, yeah. you want to put as much crap on top of a unit as possible. And three models that doesn't really do it. It's also they're big too. In yeah, in armies where like white scars, we can get bonus damage on them, or blood angels, where you get plus one to wound. You know, right? On or well, not get, but have plus one to wound on them. Dude, oh, everyone has access to plus one to wound these days. It's the yeah, the bicycle. Everyone got it. Yeah, technically, well, I could give them plus one to wound with my chaplain, and it's pretty consistent. Um, yeah. But the the thing, the reason I don't end up picking them is I just don't think they hit hard enough. Yeah, same um, here. And in my list, I have plenty of bodies that can spread out, tag an objective, bad touch a unit, whatever. Um, like I, have, yeah. I have that in droves. I prefer no- normal bikes. I mean, yeah. they have almost the same firepower. They're a way smaller base. Mm-hmm. and they have three wounds i mean yeah um yeah, i've already wounds, with so. the two biker chaplains that i run as my you know my hqs I've oh yeah i love those run into uh movement oh i love them too uh but i've already run into movement snafus with terrain and stuff where i'm like oh god like more headaches so i think adding more bikes would just make it a nightmare for me yeah the, um, it's the fact that they're on like these crazy i don't know 105 millimeter base so yeah, something insane yeah, it's, oval, it's just yeah, yeah. so okay so Anthony, you 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 uh, you beat Black Templars round two because there was a massive rock in the middle of the board. <laughs> that's um, not what I said. That's yeah. what I'm there saying. I'm saying there's, a, there's a massive rock in the middle of the board. Uh, you guys sent official official complaints to the uh-huh. TO. Yeah. Um, <laughs> kidding. Uh, so round three. Who are, you, who are you facing in round three, Anthony? Uh, so I was playing Orcs. Okay. Um, I was playing into a list with Gazkull, but he was playing Death Skulls, not Goths. Um, and it was like okay. okay, well that's a buggy list, I, I guess, right? Nope. Yeah. It was okay. a surprise. It was a Gorkonaut, um, a big orc vehicle thing because they have wacky names. I never know what they're called. There is, um, uh, I believe, if you combine three random words, you create a buggy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Th- this was Snaz, like... Waggle, Boom, Daka. Yeah, yeah, this was like right. large truck forktress thing. Oh. It had the, the steamroller on the front that makes oh. it hit on twos. Yeah, that that's the def roller. Yeah, yeah sure. See? Yeah, <laughs> sure. <know. laughs> sounds great. Right. Yeah. That's def what I roller. My brother, dude, he would say stuff, and I'd be like, yeah, man, sounds true. Yeah. Um, so he had that. He had some plane that had a lot of guns and no bombs. He had some other assorted shenanigans. It was like 30 bo- It was like 70 boys total. It was 30, 30, okay. 10. And then there was like a bunch of commandos and a bunch of def copters. Um, so I took uh, bring it down. Okay, that break. makes more sense for def schools than with the def copters because they're all obsec. Yeah, they just like fly around and they like steal yeah. objectives and it's annoying. Right. Um, or it would have been. Yeah. Um, the but their vehicles, as I'm assuming you took, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I took bring it down. I took line breaker and I took oh, it's a moment. Yep. Um, and I got the first turn, and we both like deployed on the line, and we were doing that thing like where you roll off, where you like look at your opponent, and you're like, "All right, this is gonna get crazy. Let's see how it goes." Um, we we rolled, and I went first. Um, so the Inceptors just gunned down his Gorkonaut, just like okay. Inceptors. So I was gonna ask it. that. So how yeah. many games out of the three did you put the Inceptors in reserve? Uh, zero. Wow. Okay. Because I guess if you have L's and they don't have any indirect. Yeah. Yeah. There's like. There's terrain. I'm really fast. Because they uh, move 12 with the banner, right? Yeah. yeah. So they're, it's 30 inches. Yeah, right. If yeah. someone wants to stay on their back line, you know, yeah. go ahead. That's, yeah, that's fine. fine. So you killed the Gorknot turn one with this because they're – Gorknot's tough as eight. Tough to say. But you are 2d3 shots per guy, so you're looking at what? Yeah, 10d3? I rolled, yeah, I rolled, I rolled, I rolled 20 shots, uh, 23 okay. shots. Okay. So it was like slightly above average. And I'm assuming um, you, you gave them re-roll hits with Dante? 
Yeah, but I only reroll the ones when I do that, because if you roll a two into a one and your Inceptor blows up, you're so mad. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that, yeah. Um, so, yeah, I hit with most of them, and yeah. then, like, I had, like, a decent wound roll, and, I mean, only nine wounds have to get through, and he was only taking six up saves against it. Oh, it has no, because he didn't take the uh, the custom force field one, I imagine. Yeah, you can't. There was not yeah. enough other stuff. It only had a six up involved from being Death Skull. So no, I mean, tried. there's the other one, the Morkonaut. Oh, it has an involved? Yeah, it has gotcha. a force field. So, uh, yeah, no, you didn't do that. So it died to Inceptors, and then I failed all my turn one charges. Hmm. Except, except, um, we shot Gazkull with some Angelus Bolt Guns and put four wounds on him. Wow. And then I sh- ran in Cursors at him, and with Gene Raw Might, did three wounds to him, because they're AP1. And then, so he had seven, or no, whatever the combination of wounds worked out to be was that he had uh, he had seven left in his okay. turn. Right, so he, you did five, okay. Because he yeah, has 12. And then he, uh, it's pretty good, though, in turn one. Yep. And then he charged uh, the Sanguinary Guard, and I did four wounds to him in Overwatch. Wow, with Angel's bolt guns? Yeah, yep. Did, oh. did, did you spend like two CP to make them reroll wounds also? Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. Right. <laughs> um, so I was rerolling yeah. to hit from Dante, like everything, because Chapter Master, and then I was rerolling. Oh, uh, that's what I was going to say. Everything. So for turn one, because you don't want to reroll twos, you just gave him the normal Captain Aura and then yeah. gave the Chapter Master to the Sanguine Guard. Okay. Exactly. Right. And then I, uh, yeah, so he had like. A wound left, and he charged into an area where the Judas here was close by. So oh. he died, and then he fought on death, and then he missed a bunch swinging at Sanguinary Guard because they have minus one yeah. to melee. Yep, and super so, good, super good, good ability. I'm, I'm like, finally, Death Master useful because you don't got to pay to do that. Of them. And then he'd pay a strat. It was like, what the hell? Yeah, it was ridiculous. That was yeah. not good. And now they're oh, right. now it's like it's almost like the other direction. It's like almost too good. Where I'm like, oh, whoa, 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 no, 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 don't. No. <laughs> Listen, GW, GW's watching this stream. They're watching it right Listen, now. I they're want taking notes. Look, GW, watch this stream. Please don't nerf Blood Angels. There, there, there is thirty thousand points behind me right now on Blood Angels. Yeah, yeah touch them. Yeah, keep them, keep them untouched. Keep them strong. Uh, but yeah, so he charged into the Sanguinary Guard. Actually, he killed. He had 30 boys make contact with the unit of Sanguinary Guard, and he killed five. Yeah, so one of my friends, um, he used to live here in the house before mm-hmm. he moved to his own house. He plays orcs. He, he played orcs since he was a kid, and I played orcs a lot. And the problem with orcs is like, yeah, it looked really scary. I got 160 attacks coming at you. Oh, three wounds. Cool. Yeah, yeah, the minus one to hit actually makes their, oh, their yeah. life way harder. Yeah. Um, yeah. They don't have re-roll. Orcs don't have rerolls except for Gazgul. Right, and he was dead. So yeah, that's tough. Um, the it was it was tough. Like the I never I kept I undercommitted twice into that thirty boy unit. So over yeah. like four turns, they killed the unit of eight Sanguinary Guard, and then yeah. eventually I was like enough's enough, and I killed them. Okay. Um, but I basically like slow. Oh, this is what I was gonna say earlier when you guys were talking about how you don't lose the game when you're tabled. Yeah. Uh, I tabled him on turn two. And he started stuff in Deep Strike, so it came down. Oh, okay. And it was like, whoa, wait a second. What did, um, he, what did he have in reserve still? It, it didn't change the game. I, it was it, it was like not... What, a unit of boys? It was two units of commandos. Ooh. So they came down, they charged the Sanguinary Priest, and left him on one wound, and then the Sanguinary Ancient killed them. So, okay, so I'm imagining on table on turn two, so we had a bunch of boys, they moved to the center, and Blood Angels do what they do is they just... <laughs> yeah, yeah. We so like the the way like the 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 tempo of the game was like I went first. I shot his like big scary thing, and then I like killed sure. Gazgul between mine and his turn. But that's like Gazgul is two. I I don't know what they changed. It used to be like two sixty five. Yeah, I mean whatever. Like the the more or less of it was that like twenty five percent of his army was yeah, gone. It's like six hundred points right there. Yeah, right then and yeah. then. Um, well, and more importantly, it's not six hundred points. So okay, so here's a point that I want to give to newer players is I get this all the time. You guys might get this all the time too. It's yep. like they're playing a game. They're like, well, my 200 point unit, they killed, killed about 200 points. That's good. They're like, no, 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 no. no yeah. Getting your points back is completely irrelevant. It's what did you do to cripple his battle battle plan? Right. Yeah. <laughs> it all comes down to like, so the, 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 like, the symbiosis of my army. Yeah, exactly. Is that like I kill the things that can kill the sanguinary guard exactly and even if the rest of my army's dead 
those like a unit one eight man unit of sanguinary guard with like even just one of the characters helping them yeah, right you're dead goodbye right. Well, yeah, and that's what I've had people do. They're like, oh, I, I killed, you know, your 300 points of incursors with my 300 point unit. I'm like, okay, well, you didn't kill the important shit, so right. now you're dead. Yeah, there was a good <laughs> example of that with Joe's first game. He shot at his impulsor that had assault intercessors in it, and then his important shit killed him. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, it happens to me all the time, yeah. and that's like Joe actually made a pretty good reference to it earlier. Um, thinking assassinate against me is often like a bit of a, a, bit of a meme because people will take assassinate, and they don't realize by the time that they're done, like, peeling the onion of my Sanguinary Guard, oh, man. they don't really have anything left. Well, and that's what happened. So I, I played a game just a few days ago where I played Sanguinary Guard and Dante. Yep. And they were, they were like, man, I just did. I just took down your Sanguinary Guard down to three. Yeah. And I well, you need. And they did six. So they, they put Dante down to one wound. I think he has seven wounds. He has six. So six. probably so five. They did five yeah. wounds to him. So they're like, man, I did so many wounds. I'm like, okay, well... Corbulo heals Dante. Corbulo heals Sanguinary Guard. Oh. Corbulo raises Sanguinary Guard. Yeah. Uh, and by the end of the game, Dante was full. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. The, uh, if you, like, kill all my Sanguinary Guard, it's not actually very fun to get hit by all my characters because there's, yeah. like, a lieutenant with a thunder hammer yeah. and Dante and, like... Dude, even the Sanguinary Priest, now that AP Swords have uh, AP1, like, oh, yeah. he'll scratch your paint, dude. That's what kills me about uh, Corbulo too is that he his main thing was he had a AP1 chainsword. Yeah, now it's just it now it's just like a chainsword. Yeah. Um but also your your thunder hammer with the lieutenant's interesting too. Not a lot of people see that. Usually you see lieutenants with literally nothing. Yep. It's like here's my mastercrafted whatever. I, I don't really care. But the armor and dominus gives him an invulnerable save so you're not missing like a storm shield basically. Yeah, you can't even take a storm shield on a Yeah, exactly. Hammer. I yeah. wish you could. Uh, yeah. If you could, I would, but you can't. So but the inclusion of the Space Marine book lets you take the amazing armor, which is... Yeah, that Marine. the armor Indominus is pretty clutch on the Lieutenant. I've come to learn that the like the Lieutenant's actually being important is actually pretty... Uh, like, the Lieutenant being alive is actually pretty important. Um, yeah, because the Ancient doesn't do what he did before. No, he doesn't do really, really much of anything. I've actually considered cutting him. He do um, it's Dante in a way. Like, the Sanguinary Guard already get plus one to hit if they're near the Warlord, but yeah. he does, like, the same thing. The only thing he really does is let me hit with twos on Power Fist, which is more hilarious than it is good. Oh, uh, because, because you can stack the plus two because they give a bunch yeah, of one, Yeah, right? you're okay. counteracting a Neg one. Um, sure. Yeah, you're right. Which is fine. It's most, like I said, it's mostly funny. If the Sanguinary Guard make contact with something... This, even if the fists don't hit on, I, like I think even in the game with Joe, one of his Redemptor dreads, I fought with like no buffs, and I hit with fours on the power fist, and it was like okay, and three hit, and it, yeah, uh, like, usually usually you don't even need plus two because if you're hitting on threes with Dante nearby, he's rerolling ones at least. Yeah, we're, it's gonna be okay. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. So the the ancient I I struggle with right now. I really mostly part of the problem is that I just really don't want to change the list because it's been working well, and a codex comes out in two. Um. Well, yeah, two weeks from Saturday probably, is the probably. codex, assuming well, I mean, it's the same cadence as the right. guard one. Well, and that's the, the thing. One. What Connor was talking about earlier, it's it's like part of the way you win 40k. What I was talking about too is you get reps in, and oh, you yeah. see you go to these big events, and you're like, how the hell did this guy win? Like uh, Sean Naden, he's a perfect example of this. He comes to BFS every year with some janky as crap Eldar list, yep. and people are like what is this garbage? Why is this with this? And he's like, well, I just won yeah. because he plays a lot of games. Yeah. I love watching that guy play his yeah. galaxy brain maneuvering. Yeah, really, exactly. really is exactly. a good source of things to yeah. learn from. Right. So uh, I mean, that, that, that's the thing. You play a lot of games, you learn your army, you learn its weaknesses. Sure. It may not be hundred percent optimal all the time, but you know that. Yeah. I mean, I know that there's d some, like some points in my list that are not a hundred percent perfect. And there's definitely things yeah. that are like, air quote non-ideal sure but, but yeah. i'm also 50 some odd games deep on mm -hmm. this blood angels list yeah and we're going to tournaments and people are getting to the table and being like all right so this is my second game of ninth and it's like yeah oh that's just well so and that's the, the one experience thing gap is rough well and then that's what i'm doing for the rtt too again is i'm trying to pair up people who yeah have have similar experience experience levels it's right. not fun with, with with only a few people so you do what you can you know uh so I feel like I mean every game I played at the last RTT with yeah at your place I was every game was you know well, it seems it. seems pretty good. What are you 
what are you looking if you could change something what are you hoping changes that you want to make a a shift in your list like what would you uh, like to be better uh as far as like what do i want the supplement to say or like yeah what like, what, like what right now? like what units like if you have a unit that you think like well if this unit was a little bit better i'd take it uh like, um, death company or yeah or on the door they yeah now that they have two wounds I was thinking about it today. I was pretty annoyed that they can't do actions initially, but then yep. I was like, I would probably just not ever do actions with Death Company anyway. Yeah, what action would you do? Their job is to kill things. The action is hitting oh. things. I mean, what, what would the action be? Scramblers? I mean, yeah, something like that. It's just like yeah. a... I don't like when things just like... Like, oh, nope, that just can't do that. Because yeah. sometimes like, the situation comes up and you're so angry. But the... Like, Death Company are pretty close. The Librarian Dreadnought... Uh, my librarian dreadnought basically carried my list. Oh, in the it beginning. needs wings. That's all. It just needs wings again. Yeah, once wings comes back, that boy is no joke. Oh, it is. It is the dread, librarian dreadnought is significantly better than before. I mean, people. I I was, I was watching people. They were like, "Well, it gets. It's only a three up list skill." I'm like, yeah, but it gets like plus two attacks now. Yeah, it so just needs wings. It's just better. Has wings. Uh, <laughs> yeah. It's we're on. I also right. want my stratagems back. Oh uh, well, they'll back. come back. I miss Red Rampage. I miss Wings of Fire. Yeah, we'll uh, probably get back most of those. Because like I was saying in the Discord, we're going to get between 16 and 20 stratagems. Right. So they're not going to reinvent the wheel. They're going to take 16 and 20 from PA. Yeah, from and, whatever combination and, thing. and the unique Blood Angel stratagems from the last book. Right. I mean, and maybe add a few new ones, but it's not going to be – it's it's going to be the same ones probably. I'm, I'm curious because in the Space Wolves – one they really like all in thunderwolf cavalry they yeah. have like three strats and like a bunch of free rules so i'm very curious to see what route that they go with well, angels if something gets just juiced to the moon yeah it's like it's sanguinary guard because that's like what mm -hmm. the index did they made sanguinary yeah. guard ridiculous so sanguinary guard already have a stratagem with the um the bolt, uh, guns. bolt guns they they're not going to obviously get the death mass stratagem because they got that into the stats but they could get another stratagem to replace that. Right, yeah, something like that. I mean, you know. I've... Yeah, and Death Company had the 5 plus Fiona Pain strat. They had the pregame move strat. So we'll probably get those two back. They actually I mean, still have the 5 plus Fiona Pain strat. No one runs Death Company, so there's no oh, reason to know right. that. But that's right. The, that isn't the index. That's right. The four Blood Angel strats are like really focused on like, yeah. Really specific things. They're yeah, like, right. Death Company, yeah. Sanguinary Guard, Six inch pile and I, oh, uh, I can't stand that three CP, but I use it almost every game. So yeah, I know, I know, but that's I only would, because we don't have enough strats to use. I would rather it be three CP and we keep it than it be sure. gone. Oh, like, it's not going I away. Really I mean, want heroic intervene with all my units. Yeah. So what's ever in the index will will still that those are probably hundred percent stratagems that yeah, are safe. Over. Yeah, they're probably. I mean, they're not gonna do that. But my concern is a price increase on Sanguinary Guard because they got price decreased like three mm -hmm. times in a row now. I just don't see that happening because this the Codex is coming out less than a month after. I mean, oh, again, I hope not. Yeah. That would be awesome. But I also weird. think that they're weird. like a bit. I don't know. I seem to differ on this opinion from like a lot of people online. There's a lot of people calling Sanguinary Guard like mediocre and stuff like that. I think that's crazy. I think they're just like the best unit in the Marines. They're, they're definitely. I mean, I. I I like them. Yeah. I, I think if Death Company get the pregame move strat back, they'll be, and, and the pregame move strat lets you do it after the roll to go first. Oh yeah, that would be amazing again, for sure. Yeah, because yeah. then they'll be able to get there. They they do a ton of attacks. They do like what on the charge on turn one? They have like five base attacks, something like that. Nothing survives Death Company with Thunder yeah, hitting them. It's yeah, yeah you just you die. Yeah. <laughs> That's what happens yeah. next. They got they didn't have AP before. They used to have no AP on their chain swords. Yeah, chain swords. You put them in now. assault doctrine on turn one. It gets wild if Death Company are good. Yeah. So it also becomes super uninteractive to play against, though. Like if the Blood Angel player goes first, the game kind of just ends because they just charge you and you're dead. Um, really fast. That that is definitely a reason to keep that plus two movement banner. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, you keep yeah. the plus two movement banner, and then you use it to get characters into aura range and all sorts of wacky nonsense. And then the Death Company, instead of being all by themselves, or benefiting from all this jank if you get yep. on wings of fire you can do that with lamartes maybe lamartes has a reason to be played because right now he's awful yeah because he's only a death he he he, he over death company he so only affects death company so goes. yeah so do you guys have were you gonna go do you have any other events between now and the rtt at my place uh yeah we're going to another one this weekend in uh, actually where that fight like the battle for christmas event uh, is in dixon city 
Um, so there's they're, they're doing an RTT this weekend, and we're going to that. Yeah. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Yep, uh, the three of us will be going. Me, Joe, and our teammate yeah. Brandon. Brandon. Um, okay. So yeah. what? Um. So for the viewers, what? What's your club name again? We are a team Vindicta. It's a, it's a shout back to when I used to play Chaos, and it's a big fan of uh, my boy Abaddon. That's something he says early and often in the books that's that cool. Aaron Dembski Bowden wrote a bit. Wrote yeah. About oh, it's a great. Uh, it's a great author there. I, I love all his heresy books. Yeah, anything um, that guy writes is usually fantastic. So yeah. So you're going to RTT next week. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to get people to talk next week. We'll see what happens. Um, I, I think it's pretty interesting. Uh, then we have we have we have Thanksgiving. Obviously, not, nothing going on there. You have we have my my RTT on December fifth, guys. Uh, to the viewers. The last RTT I did last month is on YouTube. The entire thing. It's like 12 hours. I streamed. We, we streamed every game, two two games at once, plus commentary. And then I have five games uploaded. Uh, the RTT on the fifth is going to be the same format. We're going to have me and Connor doing commentary. Might have a few special guests, depending. We're going to have two games being streamed again. Uh, the audio will be better this time because something was going on with the upstairs table and the video won't flicker. Uh, and then we'll have all six games uploaded after this, plus it, it'll be broken down into sections. So you should definitely tune in for that on December 5th, Saturday, after Thanksgiving. Yeah, you guys can watch yeah. Golden Men get shot yep. with mortal wounds by TJ. And yep, TJ will be here. Yep. We, uh, Anthony, Brandon will be here. But yeah, last time um, we all were in four games. Uh, on yeah, all I were know. in two games on stream, yeah. I know. Because Brandon had two, I had two, and you had two. Yeah, I'm gonna try to get some. I'm gonna try to get a few more people because I know local, a few of the local guys. I'm I'm trying to mix everyone in, mm -hmm. um, except for the final games, which are generally top one through four. Right. So that's cool. Um, we're probably gonna call it here in a minute. It's about nine thirty now, two and a half hours. Yeah. Uh, that was really good. Um, so hopefully you guys do well at the next event, the GT after my event. I wonder how many people. Did you guys know how many people are signed up right now? Uh, I was like 30 something last time I looked. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Adventure games is cool. We have a, maybe we'll tell you the story, but adventure games gives dice that are just adventure games. Uh -huh. But I, I know they're fine dice, but we use them to roll for flash gets specifically here because <laughs> they have like a 90% chance to roll a six, but only, only for flash gets shooting twice. Mm. It's, it's insane. We rolled like three times in a row and flash gets kept shooting twice. Oh, More man. games. They shot twice. It, it, we it, we it, have it, a it mythical sure. set of dice in our club that um, seems to only roll five pluses, which is yeah. Um, yeah they roll they roll a five, a six, or a one. <laughs> yeah, right. Nothing else. They, yeah. They, no two, uh, three, four. Yeah, they're like these Cthulhu dice that I use for my uh, my high fleet Chronos uh, Tyranids, cool. and uh, Brandon Brandon brought them to the last event because he's like these things are these things are they got some kind of sorcery on them. Um, and sure enough, they, they perform quite well at that event. So, so what I'm going to do is, um, I guess, can one of you guys send me Joseph list uh, from Battlescribe so I can update? Because uh, I still have your list from my RTT. I yeah. want to put the, uh, the so the all the list guys, all three lists will be in the notes on the YouTube channel. Uh, I don't know how it does it on Twitch, but it's definitely in the YouTube description. And then you can click on those. There are Dropbox link. You can you can look through them, see what they uh, see what they're using. If you have any questions. You got to sign up to the Art of War Discord. It's on their Patreon. Uh, we're switching to a new website soon. You can go to the Art of War. You you have a large community where you can you can get much better at the game by asking a ton of ton of questions. Most of these Black Templar questions came from someone on the Discord. So I'm gonna try to do this every week. Keep keep asking those questions. I'll I'll, I'll be sure to answer them. You can DM me on Facebook. I, I guess too. Um, but if you're annoying, I may ignore you. <laughs> Art of War right. is where it's at. I've, uh, Art of War is how I got into the hobby because yeah. I went to episode 7, if that is <laughs> believable, because now they're on episode 66. Yeah, they play a lot. Seven, they, where they, they had a play, player on with Morty, and I was like, I want to play that. I'm playing this game. Well, that's the best part about Art of War. Like, I, a lot of players, a lot of, a lot of players play a single army or two armies. Siegler, Lennon, Perry, and, and Nick have, like, every single army. So oh, they, yeah. they mix it up all the time. I mean, it's yeah. it's pretty right. amazing. So I those guys put out between the stream and their podcast. The podcast well, they're they're really dedicated. Like a lot of value out of. I listen to you know between the Patreon episode and the regular episode. It's it's awesome. So, 
Um, but we're going to end it here, guys. I appreciate everyone watching. I appreciate you guys coming by. We'll, uh, I think we can probably get you guys on, on next week, too, if you guys want to talk more. See, yeah, what's, see what's, what's going on. Maybe, uh, maybe if you have some good opponents, especially in the final round, let them know, too. We can bring them on, too. Sounds good. So yeah, I'm, sure, cool. I'm sure it'll be, yeah. Oh, actually, yeah. it's not next weekend. TJ's not stalking us at that event. Yeah, right. Exactly. It's it's like, he's, he's, he's not be there. Mm-hmm. I, I always joke that he follows us like a shadow. Like well, a, TJ plays all the time. So like, it's, yeah. get like a Nightbringer shard yeah. just kind of mm-hmm. hovering over us. Yeah, if you live in the tri-state area, you can't get away from TJ. Yeah. But if you like this content, guys, make sure to sub- subscribe to both the Twitch and the YouTube channel. Uh, that helps a lot. I mean, it doesn't cost anything. It just tells me that people are watching. But anyway, we're going to call it here, guys. I appreciate it. Thank you all for watching. And leave good comments on Reddit. So I can keep track of that. It's good to see.